these guys would be like, you're doing, you're doing weddings? I'm levitating. <laughs> that shit. Like they're dissing him like he's like a wedding band guy. It's like you're doing weddings, bro? I'm doing fucking levitation. Dude, I'm not even levitating. Levitate. 10 years and you levitate half an inch? Hey, leave it. <laughs> it's not even good. Is it levitate? Tell me even when you can fly. Even if you could do it, even if you could levitate for half an inch after 10 years, what's 10 the years? point? You get a little bit of a following, like me, like I'm a fast talker, and so I get a little yeah. bit of a following, right? Yeah. People who talk normal, they get no following. People who talk slow oh. and deliberate yes. get the real following. That's the grown ass dude. That's the Matt Khan. That's the Joel Osteen. Um, we're red flags. And hey, guys, tell me if I'm tell me if I'm cucking it here. Tell me if I'm being a little cuck over here. And <laughs> I'm being like, I don't want last thing I want is people in the comments be like, look at this cuck cucking around from Canada, but fuck yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's guys that are like, I meditate, my meditation is so powerful. And he and he's like, he's like that I can put a fire here for 10 minutes. And then he puts his hand on his thing. He's like, ah, oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> it's like, he's, you burn yourself. <laughs> Dude, I love there's these white ladies there. Hey, what are you doing there? Hey, Angela, what? go <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs>
I love the white babas. The white babas. Well, now so we many. have the laughing babas. Try to get a laugh out of all this stuff. Uh, so let's just talk about, I mean, the fact that you're immediately going to other podcasters and trying to jump on <laughs> their things. Let's just jump into that from the start. First. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. You did. I texted. I said I feel like I'm cheating a little bit, but I'm just letting <laughs> you meet the Mike Winhead. Is are we cool? We yeah. <laughs> tell the people right now about your Bitly link you've set up. I've set up a Bitly link because I know that people want to help, dude. I mean, the one thing that your fans are so loving, they care so much. I know they want to help me out. You know, when we hit 50,000, that's when I got this. I said, put the cowboy hat on, Amish, you deserve it, goddammit. Wear the cowboy hat. And, and, and with pride. And, and so for the people that I know they want to help, so I put up uh, a little, there's, it's bit.ly slash uh, laughing baba now. And you can go over there, and if you have some influencers that you want me to collaborate with, if you know someone in the spiritual game, you can go ahead. Now you too can help out the laughing baba. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, dude. I, lo- I feel like I am a part of a rocket ship right now. <laughs> the laughing Baba. I feel like I caught you right on your come up. You're going to be yeah. huge, dude. I guarantee you're going to be huge. Thanks, and I'm just Fred. glad Thank I get you. to, I'm glad I get to witness it. Okay. I'm glad I get to be a part, play a part. What do you want to okay. jump into first, man? You got a lot. I got to say very exciting. Well, we're talking about getting into the, we're talking about podcasting and uh, big news today for podcasters. Joe Rogan sold all of his stuff to Spotify for a hundred million, but you this is YouTube. So, I think it's a great, uh, yeah, I, I think it was uh, a good cash I mean, out. It was a good cash out, but well, this is what I love about YouTube though. You know, we could talk about the story and we'll get to it, but I feel like we should talk about a, uh, a guy talking about the story who is uh, Valuetainment. I don't know if you guys have seen this guy. Everyone in my channel has seen Valuetainment. You guys know Valuetainment? Okay. Hey, Valuetainment, I love him. Yeah. I, I love the review. So aggressive, eh? He's jacked. Dude, he looks like he could kill someone. Yeah. He, and and I, the way he's explaining the numbers. Isn't he, uh, is he military? Is he former military? I feel like he's, he's I think he's a Dan Pena pupil. That's what I'm thinking. I think he's part of that Brian Rose re- class. I'm guessing he's a, Dan, he's, a, he's a Dan Pena, like one of those kids, because man, he's got the aggression. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm impressed by is sometimes I'll watch a video and there's not a single cut. Like he has the whole video in his head before he starts yeah. recording. Like in my videos, if you don't watch every 10 seconds, I'm like stumbling over my, and then. I cut it so it makes me sound all eloquent and stuff. But this guy, he's looking at the camera and he's like, he just monologues for 20 minutes. And I'm like, dude, dude will you blink or something? <laughs> he's, yeah, when his eyes get he's open a, too, he's scary. When he, his eyes lock on you, that's when stuff starts to happen. Listen, you know that it. they didn't take his interviews down. They took a bunch of, uh, of London Reels interviews down. They, he interviewed a lot of the same people and some of his interviews weren't taken down. And I think mm. it's the piercing gaze. Don't fuck with him, dude. Dude. His YouTube thumbnails, it could be like uh, me and my best friend eating ice cream and the, his face is like, <laughs> he's, he's like, like it always looks like he's about to hit someone dude. in the YouTube thumb and the thumbnails. Okay, I have the, I have the perfect way to explain this. Look, there's, I remember for when I first saw him, he, he made a video about a mob boss. Did you see his mafia yes, mob boss interview? He loves okay, those guys, here's yeah. what's funny though. When you look at that thumbnail, I thought at first he was the mob boss. Yes. He looks more like a mob boss than the guy who's the mob boss. He's so aggressive. He's so like, he wants to be that guy, right? He's he's a lion, man. He's a lion. And even when he's announcing this Joe Rogan thing, he's like, hey guys, come here. Look at me right now. And he's slamming these papers, dude. He's got the, Joe Rogan, $100 million sale of Spotify. What does it mean? I got the numbers right here. Come here. Look at the numbers. I got the numbers right here. $100 $100 million to Spotify. What does that mean? Who's the agent? YouTube, Google, they're losing money. Spotify <laughs> went up $5 billion. That means someone else is losing money. Who negotiated the deal? Joe Rogan, you come to Texas, I'll get your house. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> hey, 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 look at me. I got the numbers right here. You come to Texas, the government's paying for your house. And that's it. $13 million, <laughs> switch the mortgage payment, and you're done. I have the contacts. Joe Rogan, never met him, never met him, never met him, don't know him. But if you come to, if you come to, Texas, come to Texas, I get I got your him. house. I got him. Dude. The guy, the, he's, he's intense, but I did like what he said, which is this, that he raised yeah. the value of everybody else by, yes. I thought that was interesting. I was like, that's true. You saw the same thing happen with like Ninja's deal with uh, Mixer. Ninja, I don't know if you are follow the gaming world at all. Ninja did this huge gaming deal with Mixer. And then right after that, everyone got these huge gaming deals. Wow. And it was like, I, I, can't, I don't want to be quoted on this. I think Ninja was basically the catalyst of a lot of that. I think he was the yeah, first dude. one. But I feel like- Good point. 
podcasts are that. about to get bought out because talent wars start. I think it's a mm-hmm. great time to go to somebody else. Now everybody's looking. Okay, podcasts or Spotify just did a big move. I want to do Dude. a big move. Hey, man, I got 50000 on CoffeeZilla. I'm calling Mike Winnett. You know what I'm saying? We're all fucking greedy little f- <laughs> Dude, did you see those two girls on Barstool Sports? They're just beefing in public. This guy, Andrew Portnoy, he owns, he owns Barstool Sports. He, 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 he hired, he's like a guy, like, it's a comedy channel, but he goes on Tucker Carlson a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's a little yeah, on yeah, the, yeah. maybe he's a little on the right wing side. Sure. He's beefing with the AOC a little bit, like sure, stuff sure, like that. Sure, sure, sure. I, I think he put out a public tweet saying, like, if you guys fucking unionize, you're all getting fired. And AOC was like, hey, that's illegal. I'm going to take And then he went on Tucker to be like, fuck you, bitch. Get out of my business. <laughs> this is America, baby. I'll fire all these fucks. And basically, he's like, he's hard as fuck. The two girls, though, they're like, fuck you, we're leaving. They're like his biggest podcast. I feel like we're at a new place with, with Twitter executives where they don't care anymore, dude. Like, Elon Musk <sighs> is like, like 420, you know, stock, <laughs> stocks too high, baby. Like he's violating all these SEC rules with Twitter. Yeah. What the fuck? Twitter? And then what, what about Twitter banning uh, the Donald Trump shit? Did See they do that? that? No. They're not banning. They're like, they're like we're going to fact check you now. And it's, this is going to be the next crazy in the next uh, couple of days. Trump is like, like dude, and now Trump's saying like, go after that. Uh, I think he wants to sue them or something. He's like, I'm suing Twitter. Okay, real ah. quick, let's touch on this topic. I know we're, all right, we're already, we're so far off the laughing so Baba's trail, but this is what it's all about, baby. It is, baby. It's, it's about it's, baby. going after, tra- all right. Let's talk about, should platforms be just no censorship, let anything on that you want? I mean, that's what he's basically saying is that conservatives are being, it's prejudiced against conservatives. We need mm-hmm. to basically free speech everywhere all the time. London Real, same thing. London Real, same, same thing. Valuetainment, I'm sure. I mean, I haven't seen it, but just just based on how jacked and how aggressive, I, I know he's gonna have some fucking don't touch my videos, YouTube, you fucks. Like, uh, you know what's yeah, surprising? It's interesting. No, he had the uh, exact opposite reaction. He's like, nah, it's oh, no. cool. Fucking valuetainment, dude. Hey, he's like, he's like, don't worry, I got I got the backup. I got backup everything. Fuck you. Like, I, maybe maybe he's just like chill. Uh, he doesn't care. I don't understand what how valuetainment makes money because in the video he goes, yeah, I never took a dime from YouTube. And I'm like, what Never, are you taking a dime yeah. from? I mean, he's in, he's in aggressive sales. I mean, it's kind of like, I remember one of your, one of, one of the guys from the comment section messaged me on Instagram and there, and I think there's a couple of people. They're like, they're like, Hey man, so great that you did that uh, copyzilla thing. I love that you guys are calling out these con artists, you know, great work. So funny, whatever. And then I go to his thing and it was like crypto King, e-commerce King, course King, Forex King, trading oh. King. King, king, dude, king. Everything, oh my king. Gosh, dude. Six months, six figures, king. Dude, dude, everything, oh, man. I, I love it. <laughs> I do love. I love my audience, but I feel like some, like fifty percent of them, are it, it, some kind of king. Con artists. Well, Crypt, yes, crypto somebody. king, marketing king, <laughs> something king. All right, he I love you guys. Me. Actually, everything. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say forty nine percent. Fifty one percent of you yeah. guys are super legit. Super legit, man. They like to see someone get called out. And then, hey, man, even the people that are doing the scams, they're nice people. They're brainwashed, man. They're, 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 they're actually losing more, dude. I mean, it's, I know it's hard to imagine the guy that you put a couple of days ago who went to Africa. And he's just looking at a lineup of people and saying, you, if you, you buy our, what was it called? Future tech? Future tra- tech training oh or something? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my yeah. God, that's a, that guy's a sociopath. But even when I'm watching his response, I'm just like, oh, he just, he does have mental illness, right? Or no, I don't know. I'm not that that's an excuse, but. I don't know. I mean, the CEOs, I don't believe have mental illness. I don't, I, I think they knew what they were doing. Yeah. They're too smart. They kind of, they knew what they were doing. The guy promoting all of it though, like he's jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing. He seems like he believes it. The guy who's saying he's going to save Africa. You mean he's like a crypto king, course king, currency king, like he's yeah, dude, forex king. He's one of those. Very seriously, yeah. Jumper. I mean, and like the funny thing is, is that after it all went bust, he's telling everybody in the chat room, the victim chat room, "Hey boys, I got a new plan for you guys. I got a new opportunity for you guys. You're gonna <laughs> love. It's gonna be the augmented reality social media network, crypto coin." Oh my god. What's augmented reality? It's like they're not real cryptos. It's it's just a bunch of buzzwords. These guys love buzzwords. <laughs> Because like, like, dude, video game cryptos. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a big business. Hey, the first ever stem cell backed crypto coin. Stem cell backed. That's one of the things he has. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. dude. 
he is very advanced technology with his scams. Yeah, I mean, it's all about layering some kind of, uh, it, it's called an ICO scheme where like you pump okay. up the, the coin with all these promises of all this technology coming and then people buy into it and you cash out. Okay, I see what they're doing. You they're all out, just, yeah, you cash out. It, it really is. And, and it, it does get hard to tell like where it's a scam. And Wait, like, hold on. In the gray area. Tell me. Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, I was looking at Patrick Bet David. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's Value Tainment. Yeah. He runs a multi level marketing company. Or Yes, of course. Of this course. Person he, I thought he was he in does. real estate. I thought he could be in real estate, though, but you're saying it's MLM for him. Okay, cool. Whatever. What? <laughs> okay, that just got so interesting. I think I texted you like, this is the next Brian Rose, basically. Like, there's something's going to come out with him, right? I don't know. It has to. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I He's just like, friends with the mob guys. Like, I mean, you're asking. For I'm not it. ready. I'm not ready to do a full report on. I, I don't know enough. No, the fact no. that I just learned this, we're gonna we're gonna study Patrick Bet David. We're gonna come back to him. That's yeah, super we, I, crazy. It is interesting. Now he is Persian, but he lives in Texas now, and he's doing these like Joe Rogan. Come to Texas. The government's paying for your house. I don't know what what was he talking about. Is there some kind of tax loophole he's talking about, or no, dude? Texas lands is just cheap, dude. Okay. Five dollars in California is like fifty thousand dollars in Texas, for sure. But so I you think just get he's so much talking more about money for your buck. You get so much for your buck, and then you never know. Like, there's all these programs in America too. Like, we, my parents were thinking about buying Florida real estate because you know how even Donald Trump talks about this. Like, when economy goes shitty, that's opportunity, baby. Go mm -hmm. buy that totally. shit. Yeah, so yeah. for years, Florida, Las Vegas, like off the strip, they were like, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars for condo. And then you just add on other stuff, whatever. But then there always are these weird government schemes. There were, there were these government things where it's like, if you're from out of the state, right. they're adding another 10,000. But if you're in, so maybe Patrick Bad David's got some shit, but he is super shady seeming. <laughs> like with all I the mob guys, feel like he I, likes that. Yeah. 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 You he, know what I mean? He likes that. I, I, I feel bad because I feel like I'm like throwing out accusations. <laughs> You know, look, I'm not saying he's this a bad guy. This is the Laughing guy. Baba's podcast. This is Laughing Baba. We're just having well, a look, good time. Hey, if you can get him, you can get him. But right, but but he does seem like the kind of guy who yeah. likes to gamble, maybe, and who likes to play on the edge. Like, just being friends with the mob guy. Like, these mob guys are coming on a show talking about how they killed a bunch of – like, they fucking killed people, man. Yeah. I know. You know what I mean? They've like, met, like, 500 people in their life. They've killed 250. That's a 50-50 dice roll. Yeah, exactly. And Patrick Van Damme is like, he's like telling his wife, does he tell his wife even? He's like, don't worry, honey, I got a friend coming over. It's like, dude, this is weird. Like, I mean, you could get yourself caught up in some shit, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. He, he, he wants to be that guy who can play on that level though. So he's fucking, you know. He's yeah, I think, that, I think that's right. I think uh, a lot of these guys at the higher, they just, a lot of the mentality is that money talks. And the way you get to the next level is you're just making a certain amount of money. And that's the only yep. way to get to, because that's like, that was London Reel's whole thing. And I want to talk about London Reel because I've done too many videos about him. I don't want to make a whole dedicated video. Let's just touch on him real quick. He's we'll had a bunch it. of shitty stuff. But one of the things he talks about, and I thought, oh, this is a mentality I would never have. He goes, oh yeah, we have to have a war chest of a certain size to be respected by these platforms. But, but honestly, I don't understand because those are trillion dollar platforms and you're talking about raising a million dollars. And it's like, that's nothing. They don't respect you. They start going crazy, though. Like, I do think him, Alex Jones, it's mental illness a little bit. Like, he, they're getting these paranoid delusions in their head of, like, there's someone coming for us and we're going to do it. Now, you could – it's hard to tell who's lying and who's telling the truth if, if inside and, – and then it's, it's, it's in a gray area. So it's like, it hurts it's like me he starts so a conspiracy. Because I know so much of the behind-the-scenes stuff with London Real that I've never yeah. let out. Because so many people have come to me behind the scenes, Amish. So many. And I've, it's so many of them have been off the record. Nobody wants to talk. Nobody, nobody wants to <laughs> everybody wants to talk, but nobody wants me to talk, right? That's what they want. That's they want, so funny. they want an ear to bend. But if my audience knew right now what I knew about London Real, there'd be riots in the street, baby. <laughs> Dude, it's, he's it's a like, sociopath. It, of I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, <sighs> how many women how many women are like i got fun. okay no, no, i'm not gonna to say anything about that he said he said i had to shit on his chest and then he would fucking wipe it on like who knows what kind of weird there's weird power domination stuff going on there it's just like roger ailes uh, if you look at roger ailes has come up and all the documentaries about him are like but he's like he brought hot girls to tv this is in his innovation he's like oh. just fucking supermodels take the front right. of the desk out 
flash the light on the legs, baby. Right. And all of them, he just tries to, he's, you know, making a move. He's like, what, you don't want to fuck me? I own this place. And he Did- gets mad at them. Megan Kelly just, that's why she had to leave. Let me show you something that's going to show you everything. You, I don't even have to say anything about anything anyone's told me about Brian Rose, okay? I'm going to share my screen with you right now, and okay. you're going to see everything you need to know about Brian Rose. I think the audience should be able to see this too. Okay. Let's see if we can oh make God. this happen. Dude, you're going to love that. You're going to love this. You're not going to believe it. laughing baba, baby. You're not going to you're, you're believe this. Screen sharing. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Hold on. <laughs> Watch this, dude. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. All right, I got a today from the most important person that's ever come to London Rio, and that is. Do you see it? The painting? <laughs> the painting. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Look at that, Nick. It's a painting of himself in his own house or office or wherever it is. It's, a, it's as tall as him. <laughs> what is that you look at that hold on let they're, me see if I can. they're so they're modern day like colonials they're like sociopaths man look imagine being that kid and look i'm nothing wrong with brian That's rose's cute. kids to be kid, the kid's cute. Super the kid's cute, cute, super cute no dissing but, the kid but imagine living in that shadow <sighs> dude looking at that every day dude it is a lot eh That's what a what, psycho that is what i'm telling you guys and some of y'all are going to tell me, hey, he didn't commission it painted. Somebody painted it for him. I don't care. If you hang a painting of yourself, your size, in your own office. Come on, man. Dude, be cool. Just do something cool in front of the fucking Eiffel Tower. Fun. You and your wife. Where's your wife? Your and kid. Dude, and it's, it's, not even, it's not like a picture. It's not anyone else in the thing of like memorabilia or whatever. It's like a portrait of him like aspirationally like. Yeah, they have these right wing fantasies of themselves. They're very much like they want to be like that uh, Ayn Rand kind of character. Like I'm business, I'm industry, I'm a fucking man, and I take it. Um, Value Tayman has a painting of I think himself too. Doesn't he? Have a, doesn't Value Tayman have a painting of him, Martin Please. Luther King, uh, Milton Friedman? He has Milton Friedman, Martin Luther King talking, and then he has a bunch of other I think businessmen like like an emperor, probably no like right? Yeah, yeah. That's his. That's his on the Joe Rogan one. Wait, I think I downloaded it. <laughs> Dude, this if guy. this is real, what? <laughs> Dude, yeah, he, no oh, he has, way. He, he has a Shabidon. He has a Shabidon. This is why this guy's hard as fuck. Every Persian guy I know this age has seen shit, dude. He's seen fucking hardship. They, they, what, they, what Iran was going through when he was a kid, this guy's fought in some revolutionary stuff probably. I wonder. I mean, I don't know when he came over, but most people I know from Iran, because that Shah over there, this guy uh, in the background, I don't know if you can see him. He's a third person. It's like Martin Luther King. Well, he's got Joker on this side. And then he's got Hulk, Incredible Hulk. Wow, what a great studio. Sexy, eh? Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now so I can share, share the screen with everybody. I want everyone to be able to see what, what I see here. Oh, yeah. my. Okay, so this isn't the same level, but I want to tell you why I think that. I don't think it's the same level. All right. But, well, doing yourself is ridiculous. This is what you're talking about, right? Oh, this is what he's got. Oh, he doesn't have himself. Yeah, he has himself. He right has himself. No, it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> it's Tupac. It's right there with Tupac. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> this is great, dude. He is. What's the two? Uh, See, this guy wants to do mo- gangster shit. That's why he's got the mob guys coming. So now he's got one racer over here. He's got the shot of it, huh? Uh, Lincoln, cool. Einstein. Is that Kennedy? Who's that over there? That's Kennedy. Milton Kennedy Freeman, Cole. Martin Luther King, Albert yep. Einstein, Lincoln. Oh, we're educated. Tupac. Who's Marcus this? Aurelius? Though? I don't know who this. That's is. a racer. I don't know that guy. That is a race car driver for that's, sure. That's Aristotle, no? Or so, Seneca? Left, left is Marcus Aurelius. You know this guy's Aurelius. stoic, fucking hard stoic shit. This guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seneca, I think this is, or maybe I don't know. Wow, I'm, they're I'm all getting, doing a little hangout. <laughs> I'm getting way outside my league. No, but I You're love. The I, I kind of love the balls of that to be like, yeah, I'm gonna paint this sick scene of all these. Great Me minds thinking and great minds collaborating. The greatest minds of our era. And why not just throw myself in the dead center of it all? <laughs> Dude, and him and Tupac, are j- he's just kicking it with him. He's got his hand on his shoulder. He's like, what's up, bro? He's got, yeah, all these, bu- all these business guys are here. But, man, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with you, dude. You're like, what? you painted them all there, too. Like, he's in the back with Tupac. Like, he's too cool for his own. No, now, I mean, it's good. good. Well, it's the, well the only thing about that is that feels somehow – you could interpret it as like it's aspirationally who he thinks has yeah. influenced him. Whereas I feel like the Brian Rose one, it uh, maybe pe- other people interpret it differently. Feels like it's more like a, like I'm almost like a God. I'm, yeah. I'm, 
by himself, that chat dude, he fucking works out hard, eh? That's a that's Pena's boy, Pena. Dude, Pena. Oh, Value Chainman has uh, Patrick Dubay, Bad David. He's got that Pena taught feel, but I don't know who taught him. Pena though has an interesting like. We're, you're going to see a lot of sociopaths coming out of Pena, I think, because you got you got London, uh, you got Brian Rose. Yeah. No, you know Dan Locke. Lady. Dan Locke is also Dan Pena. Dan Locke oh, is Dan, Dan Pena. Yes, yes. Dan okay, Locke. Okay, Asian. On the Asian side. On the Asian side, dude. He teaches them all. Yeah. And he gets that kind of cutthroat. Make the money. Make the money. I mean, yeah. That money no be, da- what it takes. be dangerous. Be yeah. vicious. Yeah. I have a testosterone level of 2,500. Make it's the, the snapping, dude, with de- 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 slamming the table, dude. He's going to break these papers. He's so jacked. He reminds me of like uh, Kevin Hart did this bit about a guy who gets so jacked and then they just work at fucking AT&T and they're answering calls. Why does this guy need to be so jacked? What's his program? His program is like they buy or they fucking die. Hey, come here. Look at the numbers. I drove two hours to get here. So who the fuck's going to pay for my gas? Fuck you. Okay, next up. Your wife next room. I'll fuck you up. Like he's aggressive, but like not literally that. Like you fucking buy or I'm leaving. But yeah. It's it, it, he's got that pressure. He he can he can he can close people, and I think he'd be proud to say that. I think that is the point, though. I think if you're if you're a CEO or you're in a sales role, I think it pays huge dividends to be physically fit, to have that intimidating. Yeah. If you're sort of slovenly, it just goes along with the whole like appearance of a salesman is very well kept, very yeah. idealistic, you know. And the way they're taught to operate is. And this is a whole type of guy and type of business that really operates in the sense of like, we're at war. We're going to go fucking take this market and I'm going to dominate and I'm going to conquer. I'm surprised he had, I mean, he has Marcus Aurelius up there. I'm surprised he didn't have a Genghis Khan. He seems like a guy that would put a Genghis Khan up there. Like just a murderous dictator. He's like, fucking yeah, baby. I guess if you go that far back though, you're allowed to put a Genghis Khan now, I think. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. History is definitely written by the winners. Yeah, he won, and he he even took over China. Like, I mean, he's he yeah no, he's undeniable. So I want to hit two things. Now I'm on- going to get a poster. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think yep. I want to hit on London real before we go? Okay. So he said he goes. He says the other day, "Hey guys, you know, first of all, he's getting crushed in his comments." Of course. It's a little bit sad because some of his comment sections are brutal. There's a guy named Brain Rose who comments on everything and he comments <laughs> in all my in all mine. All mine. And That's he's always great. like saying, like, oh, I love taking all y'all's money. Give me more money. Give me more. And, <laughs> and he gets like to the top of the comments, the top of the yeah. comment list until his comment gets deleted. And Dude, they think it's him. He's <laughs> oh yeah, because it's brain. Oh, so they brain all think it's Rose. him. They so they're liking him. They're like, no, oh, no, what they, they thumb, like thumb, the fact that he's roasting the guy. Either they think oh, it's okay. real and they like it, or they actually laugh <laughs> because it's like roasting him. But uh, we'll never know. But here's the thing. So he, he, he's been constantly trying to do damage control now. He's realized it's a problem. So one of the big criticisms of him was that it wasn't independent from London Real. So he announced the other day, hey, guys, the digital freedom platform, finally independent. We're launching it soon, soon, soon. And then he launches it <laughs> and he goes, okay, go to the digital freedom, whatever the domain is. And, uh, and immediately I click on it. And I, at first I think, oh, this is an independent site. But sneaky Brian, okay? Brian is a sneaky fella. Sorry, we should call yeah. him Brain Rose. Brain <laughs> Rose is a sneaky fella because <laughs> it's a subdomain of London Real. So it's, huh? it's freedom.londonreal.tv. <laughs> So it's not even it's not even independent. Oh my god, his thing, dude. His whole thing was we're gonna make it independent, which is why I need all of your money because I can't use my money because my money's for London Real. This is independent yeah. from London Real. No, I gotta do it independent. Then I he hosts it on London shit. Real, then he gets called out, then he goes, Okay, guys, I'm doing it all independent, independent, independent. Then it's whatever. I gotta find I gotta find the exact domain. That's this guy's he is what he is just going in a spiral, right? Like he's going crazy. He's having like issues, right? I mean, I, I, this is a thing with him, Alex Jones, um, David Icke. Dude, I remember I was doing stunt work on a video game and this guy was reading a fat David Icke book. It was this fat, okay? And he's wow. telling me that like, he's like, half, he's like three quarters of the way through. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, what are you reading, dude? I'm like kind of trying to joke about it. <clears throat> he's like, no, the lizards are here, Mish. And you know, I had to, look, I, I broke off my engagement to work on this. I, I told my parents, we're not talking anymore because I got to work on this. You got to get on board, Amish. The aliens are here. Dude, he left his wife and his family. He like, Because of David parents. Icke. 
because he wrote he was he was fully in on the David Icke lizard conspiracy, and he was like, "Look, man, these lizards are here. I'm just gonna go work on that. Okay, you guys are just well. You want to go have sex? The, the lizards are here. How can you work? How can you think about yourself at a time like this, dude? He was like very upset. I couldn't I couldn't even laugh at him. I'm holding that's, in the laughs. That's hard to laugh. That's yeah, yeah. You're like, that's what hard do for you me. do? <laughs> that's hard for me. <laughs> I've been dying to, I want to talk to you about, I want to bring something up. Tell me, tell me. Because the Gujarati, <laughs> what, how, do you, how do you even say it? You're like- Oh, Gu- Gu- Gujarati, Gujarati. Gu- Gujarati, the Gujarati police were after this guy. And I, my ears oh, God. perked up. And I was like, okay, I've got to bring this up to Amish. Have you okay. heard of this guy? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Nithyananda? <laughs> Nithyananda. Oh, oh, you do it right off the bat. Okay. I just know the name. I've heard the name, Nityananda. Okay. But tell me, I want to hear. A, Dude, I like a good juicy this Hindu guy. This guru, yeah. this is the kind of guru that I've been waiting to talk about for someone like you. I have several okay. clips. Several, Ed, none of you are going to believe a single one of them exists. <laughs> okay. The first one is a levitation summit. And oh, this God. guy runs a levitation summit. And uh, what's these levitation fucks? Since I was a kid, I'm like, you know, you meditate for enlightenment. And these guys are like, my, my, my uncle, since I was a kid, he's been doing these Hindu ceremonies. Sorry, sorry to cut it, but sure. you're doing Hindu ceremonies. And he was telling me for years that like these guys would be like, you're doing, you're doing weddings? I'm levitating. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Like they're dissing him like he's like a wedding band guy. Like you're doing weddings, bro? I'm doing fucking levitation. Dude, I'm out here levitating. You levitate. 10 years and you levitate half an inch? Hey, leave it. It's not even good. Is it levitate? Tell me even when you can fly. Even if you could do it. Even if you could levitate for half an inch after 10 years. What's 10 years? the point? Fuck it. <laughs> Dude, there's guys that are like, I meditate. My meditation is so powerful. And, he, and he's, like, he's like, that I can put a fire here for 10 minutes. And then he puts his hand on his thing. He's like, ah, oh. ow. <laughs> it's like, he's, you burn yourself. What's these magic power gurus? I'm not going to, the laughing Baba does not condone any magic power. This life is magic. The fact that we're alive is magic. That's it. Dude. Being enlightened is its own reward. This is what the Buddha teaches. But anyway, tell me, I want to see this Nityananda. Okay, okay, okay. These dreams, okay, man. so first of all, yeah, dude, you're not, I, I'm telling you, you're going to be in shock. Okay. God. So, <laughs> so just look at that oh opening my God. clip. Levitation stunt. Okay. Okay. Where, Please tell levita- me they're not going to. Okay, check this out. This he called was his style of levitation. They ju- they're like jumping, like they're like undulating. But then okay. he tells, I mean, that uh, sure, what, I mean, whatever, call it levitation. I'm not gonna, you know, whatever. First of all, though, I want you to look at something. Look oh at my this god, chair. doesn't he look like a statue? Look at this chair he's in. Yeah, Dude, I, I can't Indians wait. Laughing Baba, have the chairs. Dude, hey. I want a Kickstarter. Laughing Baba needs this chair. That's it, dude. Right? <laughs> That's it. Sorry to interrupt, but like. Look, at look, look how ornate it is. It's got like, like leaves in it. <laughs> it's got tomatoes. It's got tomatoes. <laughs> it's got lemons, dude. He's got lemons and like, dude, it's He's amazing. Got spinach. But is this-, this a chair or a subway fucking ad? It's like some of those subway ads where they're like, look, we got all the fresh vegetables. Look, but then he tells a journalist that he can make him levitate, and that's where up, everything up goes wrong. Up and away, not really. One and invited a man from the media. The still photographer of a Canada daily wore a headgear and waited. And we. <laughs> no, 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 I, no. I'll answer all the questions. I mean, he doesn't want to cooperate. I have no problem. Oh, what a good uh, line, dude! I love, I love that. <laughs> dude, I love there's these white ladies there. Hey, what are you doing there? Hey, Angela, what? go home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dude, these people why? are in India. They're fucked, okay? What are these two white blonde ladies doing there? Why? Go home. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You already had hey, it you're made. you're in a cult. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Karen, you're in a cult. Like, hey, yeah, let's man. go to Levitation Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they? Okay, so so that's clip uh, one. Okay, that's oh, just okay. clip let's see. one. <laughs> Okay, and I want you to notice because the chairs change, baby. That's the first thing I noticed. I said, this guy's chair game is off the – it's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Look, dude, that was I want to know. Tuesday chair? I want to know. Is where do Tuesdays? you get these cha- – I'm, I'm saving the best chair for last. Okay, okay so – Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, so <laughs> – So uh, – It gets better? I want to know. I, I just want to know. Where did he get these chairs, dude? I swear, where's the store I can get these chairs at? They don't <clears> exist. <throat> this is a custom chair, man. 
This is a Hindu. There's a Hindu wedding ceremony guy can get you these chairs. If oh. there's, I guarantee you, there's someone around there. Hindu, because Indian people, they're such psychos with their weddings. Let me tell you a scam. Hundred thousand dollars per wedding, dude. My yeah, cousin got married. Hundred thousand dollars on the wedding. Divorced in six months. Hey, <gasps> second wedding, eighty thousand dollars. No. Hey. <laughs> no. No way. Are you serious? So many people, dude. So 100? many people. And. And 100K Canada, but if they're American, they just end up spending 100K American too. It's fucked up. I don't know what it is. They just said at 100K, that's the number. Dude, the wedding industry, it's all about keep up with the Joneses. And if yeah. you can set it up there, everyone, they go. They that's go it. there. Me that's and my it. wife, we were like, yeah, we're going to do a cheap wedding. Spent 30, nah, not 30, 20 grand on the wedding ended up. And it's like, dude, we don't have that kind of money. We got, we got help from our parents. Luckily. I mean, we're pretty fortunate, but dude, like, it's, you guys, it's, that's where, that's where Brown the, privilege kicks in. Dude. Brown. That's a hundred thousand. All parents, dude. Kids that's, don't pay. <laughs> that's, that's nuts. Okay. Dude, dude, got, my cousin who did that, his dad, I mean, I don't even know if they're rich. They just do 180 on that wedding. 180. No out. big deal. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. I wonder if they have financing, like they have like special financing for the, <laughs> That's nuts. All right, let me show no, you this like, next it's clip. It's like brown financing. They just borrow from each other. But let's see this clip, dude. This guy's chair. Okay, this one. in this one, I want to set up this clip. I, I need to set up this clip. So Tell he me. says that he's going to stop the sun and that he, was, uh, he woke up late, I think, so that he decided just to stop the sun. So here, check it out. And day starts with sunrise. Oh, this is a different guy. No, I don't same know how guy. many of you today observed. Really? I got a little late for the Vajarogham. It is supposed to be 6.40 to 7. I told the sun, don't come out till I finish the Dajaravanam. Whoa, dude. 40 minutes sun, sunrise late. See the Bidhi sunrise time today. See, there's a uh, Google thing. There's a website where the sunrise time is supposed to be time. An actual time is recorded. Today will be 40 minutes late. <laughs> wait, wait. I've got it. I've got applause. it. I like that the applause just kicks in. Hold on, I gotta reshare this with you guys. Look at this crowd. Look bam, how many bam, people baby. are here. That's tight, dude. Amish, this is what you need, baby. Do you, are you watching Joel Osteen, brother? You got Joel Osteen right there. He's great. I hey, love him. I, you know I, I know. love him. I know. I know. Have you seen have you seen the snake healing guys? There's some snake healing guys in, I think they're in Texas or South Carolina. They do like mumbling and then they do like, and now it's gonna save you. And the snake just bites yeah no it's it's a huge thing the snake eating one but another one from india that was in south carolina i think that guy and dude the son the the dad died and then the son <laughs> he died from it and then the son would took over the church and i think he like he might be in the hospital right now or he went to the hospital like three weeks ago because the dad was a snake it was like a, a church snake charmer church guy that said god is so great god is great god is great and it won't it won't poison me oh. <laughs> like he would but they, this, this family, God. this church, they just take it. Like, they just get, they constantly go to the emergency room. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it to them, though. They're not getting some fake-ass snakes, dude. dude they, not- <laughs> hey, hey, respect on that, dude. Respect Put some on respect that. on that. Hey. Him and his dad, they're flexing, dude. They're like, fucking, I'll take it, dude. He's, he, they're, begging, they're like, please, don't do it. You'll end up like your dad. And he's like, dad, I'm going to be like daddy. What does he say when he got out of the hospital? Like, but I didn't die, though? <laughs> I think he said God tested me and I Whoa. survived. I don't know, man. They just keep I don't know about it. I don't know about that. I don't but, know but about that. But there's another guy in India. He does <laughs> so he made a DVD of himself, right? And then he ble- the people bless themselves. They literally just like take this DVD, go listen. But the but the people in the crowd, they took the DVD. He wasn't saying take it home. He they took the DVD physically and they started doing <laughs> There's a video I have. I did a video of that. I'll send it to you. No we'll have to get that way. for next time. Yeah, yeah. we gotta get. We gotta get those. We gotta get the clips. I mean, we gotta, we gotta have the clip. <laughs> okay. If you don't have the clip, it's I didn't know we nothing. were going clip level. We're I didn't going know we were clip, going clip level. Dude, we can share screen on Zoom, dude. We're going this clip is tight. level. Yeah, I love no, we it. can go clip. I can do a clip. I, I, I like the reactions, dude. Look, but okay. Did you notice the chair though? Did you? The I, chair's sexy. The chair game is sexy. He's when, getting sexy. Yeah. You're okay. If that's the same guy. First, he was like a little nerdy boy. And then the second one, he, this Look guy's getting this pussy. Chair. Look, it's, a, it's yeah. not as big. It's not as big. It's proportionate, but it's ornate. Look it's at how- It's ornate, dude. And it's silver. I like it. I like yeah. that instead of gold, he went silver. He went sexy, lean. He's in the middle. You can see growth in this Babaji. In this, but you in know this, what? In this guru. 
I don't, I actually don't like that one as much because I don't like that it's not huge. I like the ones that are disproportionate with his body where it looks like he's a small child sitting yeah. on like this gigantic throne. So, okay, no, this so, one's almost not tacky. Like this one's actually kind of sexy. Whereas the first yeah, one, it's, it's like, like, okay, you're, you're sitting on a vegetable thing. Like it's yeah, golden it's, vegetable fruit. It's weird. Second yeah, one, agreed. sexy. I, I could get the second one in my house and like you could, you could date someone and there's like a 70% chance that whoever, like a normal girl, like with a job could be like, I'll let you keep that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Totally. I, I totally agree. It's like you're- Whereas first chair- No way. That's, a, that's like, that goes at marriage. That goes at, you know, we're done. But here's the thing. I was playing See, you for a three. second because number three is a next level. And you got to understand, Woo! it's not just about the chair game. Listen to what he's saying because he's about to introduce the idea that none of you have heard of before, which is called the veg brain. Okay. Have you heard veg of the veg brain? brain? It's the brain of a vegetarian. Uh, and there's also- I'm vegetarian. I, this, um, I hope this is- It's, it's kosher. Not it's offensive co- it's to not offensive. Community. It's not going to be offensive. In fact, you're going to love this. Okay. You're going to actually love this. Dude. You're gonna, dude, the meat eaters are like me. I'm offended right now. Okay. The non-veg okay, brains. He flexes on the non-veg brains. Check this out. Oh, he's ripping and dipping. That's he's, not appropriate Hinduism, but let's check it out. I can't wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he, oh, he rips and dips. Check it out. He's not at all capable to understand. First of all, chair. Check out the chair. Wow. It's nuts. It's <laughs> where does the chair end and where does the world begin, dude? This is the world's big. This is like a magic chair. Ooh. Look at that chair. Chair dude. game on point. In the middle, he's got leopard print. Ooh, sexy, dude. I'm I like to see if it. They have a better. Uh, that's the best thing we get. Oh, dude, that's an amazing. And each this one is different. Every, I want to believe. I, it's probably not true, but every, I want to believe every time this guy sits down, it's on a new, better chair than before. <laughs> If God is great, it, this is, anything is possible. Not at all capable to understand the higher intensity does not need to be reduced for continuity. Non-veg brain knows only ups and downs. Did you catch that? Non-veg brains, like me, my brain, only knows ups and downs. He's about to challenge Einstein's theory of relativity. It Uh-oh. cannot be an up continuously. Only a person who knows continuous up is possible. He can grasp without reducing the intensity, continuity is possible. Never a common brain understands intensity and continuity, infinity and continuity. Some of the major science. You want me to stop? Dude, this is amazing. I love brown science, by the way. What are, what, what, what's that? Brown science is kind of like bro science, but when you relate it to a religion. That's, uh, I call it that. That's just my own invention. I call it brown science, but I like his science. I like that. I like when religious people start talking science. It's my favorite, dude. This is incredible. Yeah, it gets good. It gets good. Theories I'm debunking. E equal to not MC square. Yes! Cannot be MC square. Yes! What is MC square? <laughs> MC between intensity and continuity. What is yes. energy? What is matter? Yeah. Matter is continuity. Energy is intensity. What do you Ooh. call as matter? Anything continue. What do you call as energy? Anything. I want to do hand gestures for him. I want to be his hand. Tra- like I want. He doesn't yeah. need a sign language expert because he is speaking <sighs> through his hands the whole time, dude. Yeah. Good speaker, man. Very tight. T- chair game. He's Woo. chair game on point. The pacing. On, I realized I realized people who really get a following, you get a little bit of a following, like me, like I'm a fast talker, and so I get a little yeah. bit of a following, right? Yeah. People who talk normal, they get no following. People who talk slow oh. and deliberate yes. get the real following. Sandwich. That's the grown-ass shit, dude. That's the Matt Kahn. That's the Joel Osteen. That's the Matt Con. That's the Joel Osteen. We're going to get to them, but I have one more chair for you. <laughs> show me one more chair, too. This is amazing. <laughs> I swear, dude. <laughs> I love that we're both, like, you're showing me the brown guys. I'm going to show you the white guys. This is perfect. What a show. <laughs> 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 it balances out perfectly. It's great. <laughs> okay, and I'm not going to lie. This is my favorite chair yet. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> 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 the third one, they, they, keep, they do keep getting better. Like, I know the second one was smaller, but it was a tighter chair. But the third one was, like, hot. Yeah, I, I couldn't even have shown you the fourth chair because your yeah, veg ready. brain, even your veg brain, was not ready. In this one, the title of it is, I will remove non-vegetarian lifestyle from Earth <laughs> and I will make human beings <laughs> vegan. <laughs> 
amazing. I love this guy. <laughs> I love that he started clapping. He's a, he's a sunrise 40 minutes late. <laughs> It didn't happen yet, though. Did he? Is it like, in like, in like, sun will check. Like, he's oh. like, 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 check in five hours. Sun's gonna be forty minutes late, dude. Dude, this guy's amazing. And they're clapping amazing. like he did it. He didn't do it yet. <laughs> it is ah. Oh, okay, get ready. Look at this chair. First of all, look at the yes. start. It's gonna zoom out in a bit, and we'll pause okay. then. But that's the start of the chair. That's like a third of the chair. I like the look too. I like his beard. I like this look. He's going back to the the the, the, the second one and the last one. This guy. Yeah, he's getting it. He's getting he's getting it in too. You know what I'm saying, dude? Just wait. Just wait. Let's this see is. Let's see. I got, I got a lot for you. We become third-rate beings. Oh, really? Sorry to feel. Please don't be hurt. But I'm. What I'm saying is. Whoa. True. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No, he's not. That's a green screen. That's got to be a green screen. <laughs> oh, I green love screen. it. I love it forever. Is... I love this. Forever. Look, dude, yeah. dude, look at that chair, baby. His feet couldn't touch the ground if he tried. He's barely yeah. holding. He's straddling that thing as best as dude. he can. He can, he, he can barely handle it. That is he's a chair weapons, that, too. that is the, it's at the edge of his capacity to handle. He's a spiritual warrior. It's twice as tall as him. Look at this. It's twice as tall as him. Wow. Two lions. But, the, the mic side. stand can barely reach him. If you look at that, it is extended Dude, he has out. a double extender. He has a double extender mic stand. Yeah. Normally, it's... you don't need this double extendo right. to go to him. But like right. for this chair, you can't have the stand blocking the chair. You need the double extension on that mic. Be Dude, he yelled at someone. He Dude, said, fucking figure it out. You get that mic How do I get that, get that double extender chair? Like that's so... Think... Who would I... ever need it? Only him. I do have to admit that like, in Western culture, we don't put on uh, like I, I don't want to say airs because that implies that like I, I I don't know. There's like a showmanship to this that I feel mm. like Westerners don't really adopt. But I would love a chair like that. I wish it was socially acceptable for people to come in. I have a a painting that size on one wall of myself. Right? Yeah, and then I have a chair that big that I'm I'm not even I'm not even in it really at all. And I'm just well, like this. Hey, man, I, I know some guys over here oh, that can amazing. help you get there. It is amazing, dude. It's hot. That's sexy, dude. That it's, is. It's hot. The re religion game is tight all over. I mean, Hindu. The thing with India, right, is that Hinduism is like an open source religion. You can just come in. You can be like, oh, I'm a reincarnation of that guy. They let pe dude. You can come in oh. if you got the numbers. You're in the game, baby. That's it. That's so it's it. about numbers. It's about a following. <laughs> and once you have the following, you're in. Once you got the following, you kind of give, command this respect. And like nobody questions spiritual people over there. In America, there's this strong atheist movements that really fight back against that. The Indian atheist movements, man, they have such a hard time getting up the ground because at the same time as they're going, there's guys coming from America that are like, hey, you got to get, you got to like fucking beat up a gay guy or something. Like there's, have you ever seen that? Eat that poo poo. Have you ever seen that video? No. Have you ever seen the video? So, th so there are preachers that go from the South. They go to Africa. They go to India to do missions. I mean, Joel Osteen does too, but I love Joel Osteen. But they'll go and they'll be like, if you want to come up in your church game, you got to start saying some homophobic shit. So this guy in Nigeria, he starts doing like, he starts doing pastor, like uh, in his church, he started teaching like, this guy is American and he is eating the poo-poo. The Americans eat the poo-poo. And it was like a lie he spread about gay people that gay people do this. And in America, they allow this. We, we are not going to do it. In, I'll send you the video. It's a classic Christian preacher. I think he got AIDS in the end and died. Maybe. I know. And we can't say that AIDS is a dude, gay. Like, I don't want to say dude. it. Was, I'm not saying that, but I, hey, I think careful of me. Careful now. Careful now. We're careful keeping now. laughing. Not, Baba's very PG. Keep it very PC. Very clean. <laughs> and I want to, you know, we're respectful here. We're yeah, respectful. we're respectful. Respectful. Hey, we respect all the all the gurus. Those unless they're sh look, we'll we'll I'll talk about anything. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? You got to talk about it. These guys are very damaging to India. I mean, I don't know what this guy's doing, but there's a lot of them, and they're vicious, man. They eat people, and 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 the game really is if you can come to America. If you got a couple of blonde girls in the audience, this guy's doing good. That's how you know, because <laughs> you got to get that American money. I Indian money think, it's good. Yeah, the, the, the power corrupts. They have a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Here, let's see if we oh, can get yeah. to the line. Up. 
See if we can get to that the no way means they are lower level beings. No. Yes. He Look at is that pause. Warrior. Look at that pause. Are, is I, he pausing? He's paused. He's paused right now. Wow. If Mahadeva gives me. Nine seconds. Look how much. The mic pause. is cutting out. The mic is cutting out. No. Like not cutting out. Like the mic is stopping recording because he's not saying anything. Then I'll do it. I will remove right now non-vegetarian lifestyle from planet Earth. Remove it. Look right at now, do it. Look at all this. Let, let's count the whiteies. <laughs> let's count Look the whiteies, dude. The whiteies are right here. They're right you see here. You see this, can you see my mouse? I can't see your mouse, but oh, I see some. Sucks. Dude, I don't know. From this angle, I'm just seeing like eight or I'm seeing like twenty. Ten, no, ten white girls. It's all girls too. And from this angle, kind of cute. One Asian girl in the front. Um. What are we looking at? We got, is anyone black? It's hard to tell. Um, but there are straight up just like some American white girls or maybe they're European. I don't know. Look on the right side. We have a couple of white guys there too. There are a lot of white people. Yeah. They audience. like it. They Dude, like, it's, 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 they like the babas. They like the babas and they like black ones. Okay. So check this out. I have a the twist baba. for you. I have Damn a twist. Cause remember at the beginning of this, I said the Gujarat police. Did I say that right? Gujarat. Gujarat, yeah, yeah. Police got involved. Now, wait, just a second. Not Nityanda. Wait, what? Nityanda? Nananda? Nityananda. So, Nityananda? 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 I, got the, I get confused on the Nanananda. Anyway. Nityananda. Nit, as I will call him, because I can't possibly pronounce Nitty. Yeah, you call him Nit. Yeah, Nit. Nit, he had a rape accusation against him. Dun, dun, da. And it's gonna have, these guys are fucking, they're shady. Well, it's just they have too much power. It's too much power. Because I feel like when you are just, un I, I don't know. So the thing is, is he got accused of that. Of course, his followers say it was all a hit job, but uh, everyone Dude, they else. Won't, <clears throat> they respect they won't, religious people too much. Yeah, yeah, they won't turn him. Well, no, because in the 20th of November of last year, like just a couple months ago, he fled the country. He fled the country and bought an island and created his own country now. And God is great and God is great. <laughs> <laughs> Kala so the, the magic worked. <laughs> Kailasa is the name of the thing. Kailas. Kailas. No, I'm just saying it. Like, he looks like a Hindu warrior. He looks like, uh, like just the whole get, like his, his outfit. Um, he's got these bars over there. Like he is, these guys are religious leaders, man, but they are ready to fight. I mean, Osho, you saw Osho, right? Over here, he's like calm, chill, right. long pauses. Right. Did, you, did you see his documentary, Wild Wild Country? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Incredible, right? So great documentary. I mean, this guy though, when they did all the, when they look into the, I mean, dude, his top woman was poisoning the town. He, they, the, the American officials, when they started looking into it, they're like, oh, you already fucked up some people in India, ran away from there. Like he, I don't think he was allowed to go back to India. Yeah, he, he ran. He was running away, started a city here. Yeah, running away and starting a city, that's the move. Because you run away, you, I think they just they do a money grab and goodbye. I don't think, and I think the, in, like India is probably happy. You know, they're like, okay, well, at least he's off our hands. Where is the city? It's near Ecuador, I think. Ooh. A private island near Trinidad and Tobago or Ecuador. Smart. Oh, they call it a micronation. Oh, so he's not quite at the nation level, but he's at the hey, micro nation. It's not bad. <laughs> I mean, my, not bad. Micro nation. Hey. And he runs this town. Who's there, though? Anyone? Is it maybe his own? I wonder. There's like, some, did followers go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you got some footage from micro from his from I was nation? trying to find. So that's like, I feel like I'm disappointing you a little <laughs> bit here. <laughs> But because I've had I clips for see what kind of chairs. I've had clips for literally everything else. But where's the chairs over there, man? They gotta be insane. Uh yeah. I feel like I saw one thing and let me see if I can find it. So this guy did an in a news piece, but he's talking in a language I don't understand. I don't know if it's Hindi or or uh, Urdu, but let me share Let's the see. screen. I'll tell you. Madan Gaurl. This is Tamil. I don't speak this. 
This is okay. Tamil. This is South Indian. He's he might be South Indian actually. He looks like he's South Indian. But that's where the island is, all the way that's over there. That's where the island is, right here. Woo! Yep. And then they have a few pictures of like him over there, I guess. Dude, look oh, at that. Oh, let's see that beach. Let's see the beach. Look at that, dude. That's nice. Dude, he's he's rocking, man. He still got the chair. He got the chair. He got. He took the sexy chair. He took the sleek and sexy one. Hey, you know what? The big one. <laughs> uh, let's be real. The big one couldn't fit on his. No. The they plane. they had him on the run. That's the thing that he's mad about. There he's he's like, give me my chair. He's calling someone. Like, send the chair, man. Dude, but dude, had, this chair's hot. Yeah, he's got a microphone. I mean, he's got everything. That is the story of Nit. Uh, and yeah, I still can't say his name, but I love that story. I want beautiful. that story every week. <laughs> I want bigger chairs. I want. Yeah. I want a green screen where I have that chair. I'm gonna. Uh, in Can fact, I tell you something? I'm gonna create it. Boom, done. You you gotta create it. You and 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 I'm gonna tell you something, man. Like, you've opened a Pandora's box that you don't even. This is just the start. This is a good. It's a good laughing Baba day one. That's nothing, dude. I got a guy that'll rock your socks off, dude. It, it, like like there's a guy that he is rock and roll, baby, in mm -hmm. India too. It, he's in India too, and he he's always getting in and out of jail, uh, com, uh, connected with crime shit a little bit. There, it's it's that's what it's I'm. Awesome. That's what I need. That's why you're laughing, Baba. You're laughing, Baba. I'm laughing, that's Baba. It. That's it. Yeah, we got to do laughing, Baba. That's it. Um, <clears throat> I guess I do have these uh, clips over here. I mean, I don't know if I, I wasn't planning on it, but we can try it. Um, let me. Uh, if you have a time me, code, I can splice it in later. That, if oh, that's true. Um, well, I was going to show you this Joel Osteen clip where it's basically okay. So it came out after COVID, okay? Yeah. Came out after COVID. He is, his church, nobody's going in. By the way, I just want to tell everyone, I'm a huge Joel Osteen fan. Like this, I know this is going to come across like I'm making fun. Not making fun, man. The inspiration that you're going to get from this guy, I, my attitude is he deserves it, God damn it. I love these fucking white babas. They went and learned from those guys in India. I don't know how, they, I mean, this guy didn't, but the other white babas that I'm into, yeah. they all learned from India. They're so sweet. They're so nice. They're friends with all those Osho and all those guys, but I can't see if they're being doing like gangster shit or anything corrupt. Joel Osteen, I love my white friends. They get mad at me. They're like, why are you listening to this? They're saying, how come you're not an atheist? Come on, man. Don't listen to that stuff. Don't church. You're going to church. Dude, what's that? There's a lot of hate on religion here, but I'm a Hindu. There is. Let there is. Let, let me, <clears throat> let's, let's clear the air about the Babas and religion, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I I come from a religious tradition of Christianity. You come yep. from a religious tradition as well, right? Yep. Where, Hinduism. Where, Hinduism. Are you still a practicing Hindu? I mean, I'm practicing. What I'm getting into is like Tibetan and Buddhist meditation. Um, Tibet a little bit for solidarity because of what they're going through right now. They got kicked out. They're in India right now. They're getting screwed. Uh, the Dalai Lama. Yeah, the Chinese government just took it. And they're in India right now, actually. As we speak, there's a thousand uh, Chinese troops on the Indian side, and they're just saying, what are you going to do? What were you telling me about? Like, some, you told me something crazy about they, like, own the Dalai Lama now in China now? Oh, so in China, what they did is they don't want the Dalai Lama to name his successor because, chi like, China is a colonial power, is a very – calm and patient long game kind of strategy they walked into tibet like they did they do everything so legally too they went into tibet and they were like we're annexing half the other half whatever they did attack them like they just beat the shit there's footage of them beating people they're like you're not allowed to meditate at the dalai lama they're and they're not allowed to fight back because they practice loving kindness meditation so basically they're getting beat up they're basically like no meditation dude there's uh, people that are like there's a guy standing there with a stick and he's like hey no meditation no meditation. He's uh -huh. checking. So like someone's like, yeah, how, how can you stop it? You close your eyes and like whack you. They're very loud, dude. Their meditation is like, uh, like it's like very uh -huh. loud meditation. So I think they're not, but also no, they, they're, it's like Chinese torture, man. It's like there's re-education camps right now. The Muslims in, in China right now, they're being sent to re-education. So we're, you're going to go to school and not be Muslim anymore. You're not okay. See, I'm not, not okay, obviously. But, uh, but let's talk. So you're to bet. To bet. With the takeover of Tibet, I did just get my degree in Buddhism, so we talked about this actually from Harvard X. Um, so we did talk <laughs> about this. We, we're going to come back to the Harvard X thing because I'm dying to talk about that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but they but yeah, the Dalai Lama. What he's so sweet. When I was younger, I was like, I I really loved Buddhism. But when I heard the story, I was like, Hey man, 
can you fucking levitate and f- tell these fucks to get out then? You know what I mean? <laughs> in my head, I'm like not understanding. But, sure. but really, the, 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 he went to India because they believe in loving kindness. They, they're not allowed to fight back. Gandhi did the same thing. Martin Luther King did the same thing. It's very effective, actually. It is it's the, the most long effective. game. It's the long game because it is, and, immediately yep. you lose, but you win the hearts and minds of everyone watching because nobody likes seeing the oppression of another class. And my point, my point in bringing up both of our interest in spiritual things is because we're going to make fun of a lot of gurus, a lot of spiritual gurus. Our point isn't that if you believe in something or don't, that you're dumb or whatever. Our point is that they're clearly, everyone could agree that with this stuff, a lot of charlatans get away with a lot of stuff. And they need to be called out. You know what? They need to be called out because this is like an area where people are more vulnerable than anywhere else. Because all of a sudden you inject, you know, like just believe in there and people go bananas. Our they brain do. goes haywire and we lose all our money and we believe some wild stuff. So we're just gonna, desperate. So we're not, we're not. I just wanted to say as the first episode of The Laughing Babas, you can watch this. You're not going to get offended if you're someone of belief or not of belief. But guys, just stay here for the laughs, the gaffes and understand we're going at this with a light heart. Thank you. That's great, man. Thanks for that. That's, I wanted that's to put I wanted to put it in there because we're hey, gonna man, go we after people. We're gonna be we're, taking we're going on after some sacred cows, baby. Yes, we're we gotta take on- we gotta go after them and we have to do it with loving kindness. And this is this is the Buddhist this is the, the Buddhist way. It's beautiful. The loving kindness meditation is the correct way. It's like we it can't come from a place of hate, can't come from like I hate you. Right. This is why I genuinely do love Joel Osteen. I think it's a beautiful teaching, if I'm being totally honest with you. Yeah, but here's what fascinates me about Joel Osteen. Because I didn't watch him for till I was probably 22. I've never, okay. I've never seen him. I never heard of him. Even though he's okay, close careful. to me. I'm going to get very offended. I'm hold on. Very offended. Hold on. Go on. Okay. He's, he's at Lakewood, which is in Houston. I'm from, from in like I'm in Texas, uh, San Antonio. So I'll just spoil it real quick. I'm wow, San Antonio. You have to be so close. Okay. Yeah, dude. So get, <laughs> <laughs> You're close to that Osteen. Team. That's why I'm so blessed, baby. That's why I'm so blessed. <laughs> You feel no. that favor? <laughs> so, so, so I'd never heard of him. And then all of a sudden I hear about this guy that's like renting out sports centers or whatever. And so I was like, oh, this guy's an idiot, whatever. And so I watched one of his things. And here's one thing that I took away. Okay. I've never seen somebody whose smile is on permanent. The smile is nuts, dude. It is, it is a chair. It is a gigantic, <laughs> beautiful chair. If we could make it. Uh, uh, because no matter what he says, like, I feel like he could say any words and yeah. you'd be like, yeah, this guy's likable. I, I, lovable. But you've got to want, but you've got to wonder like, though. I don't like the accusations with, coming on him. But you got to wonder though about, I mean, isn't there a bunch of things against these mega church people about they take too much <laughs> money that you don't need that much money. You know, sure, you don't Joel need, Osteed, look, he's big on the sports cars. He's big on the chat. Come <laughs> on now. Crazy. That's because God wants him to be abundant. He wants you to be abundant, too, brother. The Lord wants us to be abundant. We you are all children of the most you, high. You didn't tell me you had a, a Joel Osteen voice? That's amazing. That's <laughs> the good. The Lord wants us to That's be good. abundant, brother. He, and he has a, a message of love. Dude, I love his – he has one pre, a sermon where he's talking about, like, he's talking about how I love – he's like, they, they, they said, Joel, you can't love the Hindus. Do you love the Hindus? He's like, I love the Hindus. Joel, he goes, I love the Hindus. I love the Buddhists. I love the Muslim. And, dude, the crowd was like, holy shit. What? Like, <laughs> they're like, what? Dude, he brings the heat on him. In Texas, he said, I love the Muslim too. You know what? Hey. He, and, and that, you know what that story was? He, a beautiful story. He's telling yeah. a story about how, so, so all these other preachers, they hate on him. They, they hate, he got, he's got haters. You know, God knows he got haters. He, God sends haters to let you know you're on the right track. That's <laughs> one of his, woo, that's, that's, a, that's a banger, dude. God sends haters to let you know. Dude, that's, he, he has dude, the most um, motivation. Dude, trip. Joel is going to text you, dude. He's going to be your next influencer. You go on because he's going to be like, yo, yep. thank you, Amish. He's having a hard time. The church is, the, no one's coming to church. I'm watching it. He's barely doing the joke at the beginning. He does the joke. It's just silent. The last one I watched of his, he does the joke. He's like, he's like, hey, y'all, thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Gosh. No one can come in, but I'm going to do my best to bring the energy for you guys. Okay. 
Well, I stopped. And then he goes, he's like, he's like, he's like, I stopped doing the jokes, but they, they keep telling me in the comments that they want the jokes to come back. All right, y'all. Well, I got this one for you here. And he does it. And then like, there's no laugh, but he's just so like, he's working for God, baby. He's working to bring inspiration. I, I, he just seems so genuine to me. I, I, and, and it's so positive. It's positive. Yeah. I, I don't know though. I mean, I just, is, yeah. I get, listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I get suspicious and when religion gets too big, yeah. I feel like for the same reasons with the guru, why there was like, like the, like the rape stuff. And like, I don't think that's coincidence that someone who sits on a chair that big is having issues. You know, your, your head, I think it goes to another place. I don't think m- People actually, I believe the same thing about fame. I think fame makes people go crazy. When you get too much attention, too much power, too much anything, mm-hmm. it's not good for you. You weren't equipped. You know, we were. Yeah, we yeah. were. So, we were some little tribe. You know, you had forty friends total. You yeah. know, at your best, you had forty followers. Now, forty <laughs> followers, you're a loser, dude. You need a million, <laughs> baby. Get those million. I just followers. got, I just got fifty thousand, baby. Fifty thousand hits, baby. <laughs> it just trips you out, dude. It's, yeah. it's too much. So when I see something sure. like this. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's hard yes. to tell. When numbers get this big, you are looking at sociopath area. I mean, and it's sad yeah. because it's not just yeah. in, in this stuff. Even look at Hollywood. You look at someone like Cosby. You look at someone like in Canada, there's a guy, Gian Gomeshi, told everyone he was a feminist and he's obviously just beating the shit out of girls. And like, the, you, you almost, there was a minute there where I was like, can you make it today without being a fucking sociopath? Like, do I have to hurt? Do I have to step on someone's neck just to make 80,000 or something? Like, it... It, it is easy to lose faith. Yeah. But Joel Osteen, oh, there he is. Dude, look, but there look, he is. okay. Yeah, there he is, right? Okay. But look at how big that stage It's too big. It's too big. He's got Amen. a globe the size of almost the globe. He's got the stairway to heaven over there. Like, literally. So you love the Hindu with the chair, but you can't respect the Christian I... with the big stage. <laughs> No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I wasn't surprised when the chair guy had a problem. And right. when I see Joel Osteen with the problem, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not saying I, I don't know. I really don't know that much about him other than he's got the this problems have been smile, little but- like someone really tried to make like people are trying to get after him. And like, I know I'm such a Joel Osteen defender right now. People I know. Are trying to get after him. <laughs> hey, I'm a I'm Hindu. I love Jesus more than the liberal. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you what, I love the I love Jesus more than the liberal. Dude, I was at, I was at, I was at, um, oh, man, I've dude. always been into this guy, but I've always been into Jesus too, since I was a kid because Hindus, it is open source in that sense too, where we're just like, you know what? We'll, we'll check him out. That's cool, baby. That's cool. I, li- I like, I like you're, you're kind of the, the buffet, man. You got this, 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 you got this, you like a little bit of Tibet. I like it. Listen, That's what life is in, for a Hindu, I guess, you know, listen, I Tell think me. people are going to like, just from our conversations of our people are going to love this podcast or they're yeah. going to hate it, baby. You think so? You think because of the Joel Osteen defense? I don't know. People don't like Joel, but you know what? People the laughing are, are Baba. Hard on listen, Christians. listen. The Babas are not for popular appeal, baby. We're for no, us. No, I gotta, I gotta tell you the real deal, man. Tell he's us the beautiful. real deal. Yeah, he, uh, he is, he's poetic. He has beautiful, inspirational stories. He's equivalent of like, uh, of like chicken soup for the soul. Dude, like he, it's, it's, it's fluffy, but he takes a Christian teaching and makes it accessible. Makes it very. Sec- totally. I want to say secular a little bit because he actually has other preachers. He got haters, dude. He's got haters because I, he was on Piers Morgan. Right. right. And, and Piers Morgan said, hey, say you hate gay people because it's in the Bible. Say you hate them. And, and Joel Osteen said, hey, I don't hate it. The, he, he's like, I don't, I don't hate them. They're a child of the most high God. How can I hate them? And then, and then, and then Piers is like, no, the Bible says it's a sin to, to be gay. And, and Joel Osteen, a class actor. You know what he said? He said, that, now that's true, Piers, but... The Bible also said it's it's a sin to get angry, and God knows I get angry sometimes. I'll tell you, I got, I'll get I'll get angry, hey, dude. The thing is, he doesn't even get angry. He gets this angry, and he's like, "Well, I'm I'm sinning, and then the the the, the gays are sinning, and that's fine, Piers. We can't judge them." And then and then these other preachers come to diss him, dude. They come to fucking protest against him because they're like, "Why didn't you fucking say gay people are wrong or whatever?" There is a lot of. Uh... It's funny how much gatekeeping there is in various, you know, religions. You're doing your own thing. And I, th- I think part of it's the success. I mean, Joel Osteen's obviously huge. Uh, and maybe that's part of it. You know, you are I th- right. I should be mistrustful of him a little more. I just haven't seen anything. 
Like, like there's pseudoscience. I mean, I was, I, I have a clip here right now where he's like, he's like, when Jesus, uh, he was talking about how Jesus, when he was on the cross, he was whipped 39 times. There are 39 types of ailments in the medical journal. And he does those math. <laughs> It is hey, one of those. Why do they do those? Like, oh. <laughs> that one, that, see, see, what oh. I do is I get those, I laugh. I call that brown science. When you take your religion <laughs> and you just go, bing, bang, we invented it. Dude, Hindus are taking credit for Santa Claus. You're like, Santa Claus? Dude, we, that's I, love that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But he, dude, it's, I, so I, it, it's, it's positive. It is, sure, I'll give it to you. Like, he, maybe I'm being naive. Maybe he is. No, but you know, maybe you know he's, one thing- he's fucking with people. One thing <laughs> too is I've noticed that I think uh, in America we have a real thing about mistrusting like the dominant cultural thing. Yes. And I think, you know, That's I great. mean, if, if you had to define it in America, it was white male Christian. Yes. Yeah. And that became the thing. And so then it's like, okay, we're just going to hate. I think as a to maybe an unfair degree, baby. We're getting yeah. a hard time. It's and and I and I say that jokingly, obviously, you know, the privilege. Blah, blah, blah. But uh Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I have I, I work I work in TV, you know I work in TV, just yeah. on a Canadian screen yeah. word and a writer's yeah. guild uh, okay. and uh, <laughs> you know I'm in TV here, but people would you know there's a lot of diversity stuff and people will be like, how can they put a white man in there? How come a white man is on that show? And I'm like, you know, it's been his dream since he was five. What are you gonna do? You gonna you want him to kill himself? Yeah. Like he's he's here and he's alive and he's just doing just living his life. So like I get it. We there has to be you know certain things to equalize stuff, but I don't think hating people is the way to go. I think it's all about loving kindness. And even if we're that's why on the show, even if we're roasting someone, I love not, it. It's gonna be like, hey man, not softball, and that doesn't mean softball because yeah. the teaching like like the Buddhist and that kind of philosophy is to treat things with loving kindness but you need the loving kindness because you're going to deal with everything head on. We're not going to avoid anything, but we're going to go head on with love. It's a, it's a very Dude, powerful, powerful Thank you. right there. Hey, 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 that sounds like a Thank guy who got his Buddha. Buddhist degree from Harvard X. Let's talk about Harvard X for a second. <laughs> we just got real heavy. Let's take it back a little soft, baby. Let's get it. Let's okay. get back to the soft balls. Okay. okay. Soft. After saying we're going to deal with everything head on. You just got a degree in Buddhism from Harvard X. Yeah. Now, when you first said this, I think you just told me Harvard, and then you're like, Harvard. X. X. <laughs> <laughs> so tell people what Harvard X is, dude. I love it. Harvard X, I love dropping the X on that. Uh, years ago, I was on this kid's TV show. They applied for an Emmy, a daytime Emmy, the, the real one, you sure. guys. And <laughs> they applied for the daytime Emmy. I was like, as a comedian, it's good that it's enough that they applied. I just started telling people. Didn't even get the nomination. Mm -hmm. 2018 Emmy nomination applicant. That's Baby. fucking hilarious. Dude, that's amazing. I like to put a star and then at the bottom I put applicant. With Harvard, you can put a star, put X. Hey, it's certified. It's I'm making my inroads with the Baba's. It's like, associated with Harvard. That's it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's it, man. Dude, you're making your inroads with the Baba's. What's the game here, dude? You're going to roast these guys and then you're going to start your own thing. You know that's actually what they all do. Is all these guys over in India, they all say like all the people before me, they were full of it. And then they go oh, yeah. start their own thing. Um, you know what they do? They pick a lane. Um, you definitely, look, this is the come up all over the world. You got to have beefs. And this is another thing I love about Joel Osteen. No beefs. He's That's not coming hating people. But yeah, definitely in India, they're beefing with it. They're trying to take each other's, other's followers. They're like, fuck, they're, right. fuck that guy. He's they're like you know cannibals. Because like... you Osteen really only can have protest. one guru, huh? You can have one guru. In India, hey man, or if you're going out and paying money, I want the fucking money. Bring your five dollars right. here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But even Joel Osteen, he's so one of my favorite Joel Osteen stories. He's talking about how there was a preacher talking shit about him, and he this is a great Joel Osteen, beautiful story. It's called having a wide circle of love. So you gotta have a wide <laughs> circle of love. You really you gotta have do wide watch circle. a lot of Joel Osteen. It's so good. So he's talking about how these these preachers hey he got haters. They're talking shit about him. They're they're mad at him. Whatever they protest him. Hurricane Katrina hit, and they, they got a list of churches that need help, that need money. These guys are on the list. He said, he said, you know what? I'm not sending them that money. I don't, I'm not going to send it to them. They were, they were, they were hating on me. They're, they're being real nasty to me. And then he said, but I thought about it, and I prayed on it, and God said, give them the money, Joel. It's the right thing. And here's the, here's the, here's what he said. He said, he said they drew a circle to keep me out. <laughs> 
I drew a bigger circle and I pulled them in. We are friends now. We are doing each other's church. I'm so glad that I reached out to him and we, we were able to solve whatever issues. Dude, this guy is basically like, fuck Joel Osteen. He's, a fu- he's gay. Fuck him. This guy, come on. Come this on. Is a loving kindness. I drew a wider circle to bring <laughs> them in. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Have you heard of Matt Kahn? I'm certified in Matt Kahn, too. Dude. I saw that certificate. Oh, my gosh. You've got certificates out the yang. <laughs> yes, I saw you sent me something called a galactic message. I want you guys to understand. I love Amish. I, we may not agree on Matt Kahn. I haven't watched Matt Kahn Matt very Kahn much. Matt a little... <laughs> He's, Look, we can. He'll he'll come up more as we go along. I I have he no is, doubt. Okay, so you sent me something called a galactic message by Matt Con. He's my new favorite guy. Really? He's your he's, guru. He's is he he's your taking guru? over Joel Osteen. He's taking over oh. Joel Osteen. Oh, his class very tight. Whoa. His class is a giant loving kindness meditation. This is a form of Tibetan Buddhism where you use loving kindness as a tool to heal yourself emotionally. It's very effective and the science is there. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm talking about UC Berkeley. They all got into meditation. John Kabat-Zinn got into this meditation too. They're all like Western. This is what I'm talking about with the white babas, the white gurujis. They're all a bunch of white guys. They're all all Harvard lawyers and they all, like Baba Ramdas was probably the first one. You got Eckhart Tolle now, but they're all teaching this kind of- Dude, freaking Jack Dorsey's like going on little summits, little meditation summits, dude. Yeah, they're all into that. They're all into it. Yeah, all the Silicon Valley's into it. Big Dude. money in this. Okay. Big money. That's We're gonna laughing Baba is gonna we need to get that speaking engagement. It's gonna be fifty thousand dollars. That's it. That's it. Hey. Fly in, fly out, fifty thousand. Jack Dorsey's here, fifty fucking thousand. <laughs> That's right, baby. All right. So We're gonna go, go do that. Matt galactic Khan, message. <clears throat> okay. Now, do you want to play it or do you want me to just tell you? Well, it's an hour long. Okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> play the first uh, Play the first like minute of it. I think it'll work, and then I'll stop you. Okay. All right. We can cut it out if if we need to. Yeah. For those of you that are new, I've already got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> when he's not talking, he just looks like a cop, right? Like he just looks like a cop that would beat the shit out of you. Why is there and, so uh, much breath in he, every? For those of you that are new. What is it, man? You're getting a little ASMR with this guy. You're getting yeah. a little free yeah, ASMR yeah. for free. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're going to go back in. Back. I just had to take yeah. a quick Look, breath. and I just want to tell everyone, too, that it is hard. I, I, I'm not just recommending this guy. This is the kind of guy that if I just send him willy-nilly, people are like, hey, are you okay? Are you lonely, dude? What are you watching? Like, what the fuck is this guy? What does he mean? I get it. It's very high-level stuff. It's basically a living, loving kindness. If you think about it, he's not – he kind of has the same belief as – the Dalai Lama, but that's a stretch. But let's, let's hear a little more. Let's hear a little bit more. When we gather together, I am intuitively guided to share with you insights to assist in your soul's journey. Whether that is to create deeper moments of healing, to transform aspects of your life into higher vibrations of light, or to assist you into awakening to your true nature deeper and more palpably than ever before. I feel okay. like the static of the room is louder than he it's is. It's a lot. It is we a lot. come together. I'm intuitively motivated and guided to say the words that as I speak creates a transmission of presence and an energy for many celestial beings and masters. Assist on my behalf. Oh my okay. gosh. Okay. That wasn't the end of a sentence. Hold on. Watch this. Watch this. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> This is, is amazing. You're talking this, about pause game? Dude, pause no, no, game it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's not a period. It's a comma. Listen to this comma. Hold on. Watch this. Watch this. Hold on. I, I skipped five seconds back. It wasn't even the end. Hold on. I listened to five and seconds. Five. Beings and masters. Listen, that's not the end of the sentence. I'm getting a full sentence in. Assist on my behalf. Whoa. Whoa. Dude. Celestial beings? See, that I don't believe in. Assist on my behalf. It, it's a lot. I know. It's a lot. Okay, so that does get weird. Okay, I don't believe in that. I guess he's like Joel Osteen in that sense that, like, I technically, you know, like, even Joel Osteen's like, he was, uh, like, he was talking about Jesus was whipped 39 times. That's the 39. The medical journal says there's 39 ailments that affect us. 
every year. Like, you know, I don't believe in that science of it, but Matt Kahn is a loving kindness meditation. He's got a great philosophy of life. It is a little bit ASMR voice. I, I get it. Um, he, you know, but, but it is, and, and, and here's, here's why I think he took the spot from Joel Osteen for me. This is why this guy's on another level. I wanted why? to play just that much. Why? It's fine. But yeah, because Joel, okay, look, I'm a con, I'm, I do stand up. Um, I'm watching Joel Osteen. I'm like, this guy does a joke off the top. He's got funny stories. Ty, I, I love it. Respect it. He's going 22 minutes. He's got a teleprompter, very professional, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Matt Kahn. No script. Hey, baby. No, notes, no teleprompter. Transmission from the most high. That's it. He doesn't have <laughs> notes ever. He, he transmits. Well, right, dude, I don't think he transmits. I think he thinks of his entire speech as he takes an hour to speak 30 words. I mean, if I had that long to speak, I think I could come up with something too. I, I and listen at 1.5 speed and <laughs> if we're talking. But, dude, two hours? This That's guy's ripping time. for two hours, and there, it's hey. not fluff. He's got good stories. Like, he, he, there's another one where he's basically doing, he does a lot of Portlandia rips, where all these, like, kind of sad, like, white Portland, he's in Portland, I think. So all these, like, depressed, you know, like, they're, like, sad and, um, yeah, they're, like, you know, like, Western, modern, right, 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 right. you know, Westerners. Little I mean, black I am pill, too. little, uh, yeah. Little cucks, little bunch of little cucks, and he he he'll totally just fucking call him a bunch of cucks. Like he's just like, that's why you guys are too weak to stand up to your spouse. No. And like he'll just no, he doesn't he does, say that. He does great stories. He'll he'll do a story, but like it's called being passive aggressive. Like he does stories, but they have jokes, man. He has jokes. Here's what I want to know. Tell me. So this guy's game. How do you become a Matt Con? Like. What is the, I'm so interested one of a kind. in the origins. No, but I, I mean, I mean like the origins of these people who grow up to be gurus. Like I, like I'm right. wondering, am I witnessing sort of the transformation of Amish into Baba Amish, right? Is that what's going on? And if yeah. so, my mind is blown right now. Yo, we're, we're doing it. Are we doing it? We're doing it. You're we're gonna have to right start now. talking a lot slower. You're right. I do talk fast. And a lot breathier. A, ASMR, a, a ASMR. lot breathier. Lower. To, actually, yeah. this guy doesn't have a very low voice, but he's got a gravelly kind of breathy voice. Yeah. Look, I'll say I that. talk fast. A stand-up comedy. So I, I remember uh, I was doing stand-up here at a, at a club, and the owner was like, hey, you're doing 20 minutes of material in five minutes. Slow the fuck down. He's been People have been telling me for years. It's like, you talk fast, man. You're just running through material. Calm down. So even in stand-up, it's like... <laughs> But the thing is, if you're getting the full story done. Hey, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about uh, comics on this podcast, but I'd love to. Real quick, okay. I want to know what you thought of – this is such a left-hand turn. We'll return to Matt Kahn. Left okay. Hand, okay. Uh, left turn, right turn, whatever you want to call it. I saw Chris D'Elia's new special on Netflix. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to give a half hour now, whatever you call it. I'm going to okay. say trash. Oh, it wasn't good. I didn't think, did you see it? I haven't seen it. Oh, uh, okay. Well now I, I love his pod. I think his podcast, his is doing podcast, right. hilarious podcast, hilarious. His stand up was like his podcast though, where he took like one riff about like, Oh gosh, something about a dolphin or I'm going to get this wrong, but it was some stupid thing. And he riffs on, he riffs on a single topic for like 15 minutes rather than like hitting a joke. Like you do in a special where you're like yeah. joke, joke, joke. And instead he's like riff, riff, riff. And you made me think about it because you're talking about like burning through material. I felt like instead of going through 20 minutes of material in five minutes, he went through five minutes of material in 30 minutes. Yeah. See, at that point, he's doing a mad con. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Matt Kahn, if you watch him, you're basically watching a stand-up comic going really slow. And Baba Ramdas was like that. Jack Cornfield is like that a little. A lot of these meditation fucks, they're doing jokes, dude. Yeah, they're everybody. Doing jokes. Every, well, the thing is, is when you get to a certain level, everybody wants to be something else. So yep. when you're a, an actor, all of a sudden you want to be a political figure, right? All the actors yeah. think they're political guides to everybody else, right? <laughs> It's true. Oh, it's singing, singing it's like, true. Imagine there's no uh, kind. Uh, uh. 
<laughs> when you yeah. become a cop, when you get the highest level of comics, like, like Chris D'Elia, he was like high up there. He starts doing all this fitness thing. It's like, you're not a fitness guy. Why are you taking yourself so seriously? People, yeah, people here are like, we we're very- uh, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We're very much like, stick to your thing, man. You fucking bring the heat on. You, it, I, mean, I love America like that. It's art is a business here. And it's like, yeah. you fucking made something, you do that thing. Forever. Uh, forever. And also like stand up is very strict here. You look at like, and, and I like that, man. I like that it's fucking joke, joke, joke. I don't like this fucking slow ass stand up. Yeah. But in other countries, they get away with these like talking, sh like they do, Um, even in America, actually now they do like, oh, it's a storytelling show. So, so they, like, how many comics are just doing a storytelling show and it's like, will you just polish and make a stand-up? Because good stand-up is a story too. Like, You know what it is, is people have realized that the bar for entertainment is actually low. Yeah. Like some people, they just want a night out and they don't care what it is. Like there's, there's two divergent ideas of art. Some people think you don't come out of the cave until you've created the greatest thing ever, you're, you're Michelangelo or whatever, yeah. and then, or you're David and you come out and you present it to the world. Some people, they're like, you mass produce some content, baby. People That's don't America. want greatness. They want quantity. They want it they shoved want down their throat. They're bored to tears and they want more, Amisha. Yeah, America is like, they take it to another level, man. Even The Office in England, six episodes a season. That's right. Two seasons That's and right. two specials. That's it. It's a modest little thing. They did more than that in the second season, I think. I think the second season of The American Office was like 25 episodes. It just was like 25. But I love it, that, though. I but I love it. Great show. It, that's one where they did it right. And I think, and hey, God bless America, baby. I love that. I love that we're taking it to another level here. It's so funny, though. Th so the way you talk about America is interesting to me because you're like sort of like part of the American <laughs> empire, sort of not part yeah. of the American empire. How does Canada think of Ca America? Like, is it like the promised land or like, it's like that, no, we don't really care to come over there. Like, I feel like I don't really care to come over right now. I've, I've been like that, dude, because they're, they're, all my friends are in New York and I'm like, that's, I'm going to have an anxiety over there. It's too much. I'm soft, dude. I can go to LA. Dude, Bombay and New York are two cities that I'm like, you can't live here. No way. Listen, Matt Kahn wouldn't survive in New York, for example. And no, <laughs> no follower, no disciple of Matt Kahn would survive in New York. It's too fast. It's too fast. Yeah. He'd be halfway to hailing a taxi and it'd run him over. Yeah, no, New York is too much. It's just go, 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 go. Um, Canada's pretty, Toronto's pretty chill. Uh, Canada, yeah, it's, it's interesting. We are living in, in, it's hard not to be influenced by it. We sound the same. The television's the same. So it's, uh, it is the promised land though. But I, my attitude is I'll go when they call me. Listen, the Baba, the laughing Baba, they're going to pay for my visa papers. Or maybe it's going to be a green card. I don't know. I'm either going to marry in or I'm, someone's going to, some Kickstarter is going to pay for my shit. These guys are like, we're talking I, thousands to come over. Yeah. I worry that you're going to start a cult. And to everyone in my audience, when Amish starts sounding crazy, <laughs> when he starts recruiting, when he gets the email list going, don't sign up. Okay. 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 Hold okay. On, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> talking about cults. We got to get to your, we got to get to the bombshell, baby. Oh, that's, you told me there's a bombshell. I, for the record, I don't know what this is. I did not tell you yet. That's go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, you, you're, 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 uh, you had someone on, you did a little podcast with someone and you guys were doing a bit of a, you guys were basically doing a wrap up on Brian Rose and what a psycho he is. And you had someone on who I thought almost seemed almost like a morality expert. And he was there like, not a, like, like a moral pillar in his community, uh, <clears throat> the channel rebel wisdom. Okay. And I looked into his stuff and like, yeah. look, He's got a course. It's fine. He's got a little men's camp, a little boot camp you can go to. No, it's fine. It's, it's okay. I'm um, not saying it's a pyramid scheme. The logo is a pyramid. Not saying it's not a pyramid scheme. <laughs> not a thing. Logo is a pyramid. Not a thing. It's not a thing. But I just started chat. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I see something here. Maybe there's something. So I started watching the, the trailer. Everything just kept on just sending me on more um, weird red flags. And hey, guys, tell me if I'm... Tell me if I'm cucking it here. Tell me if I'm being a little cuck over here. And <laughs> no, I'm being like, I don't want, last thing I want is people in the comments be like, look at this cuck, cucking around fucking from Canada. But I'm watching this guy's, uh, so the trailer for the Rebel Wisdom channel. And the first red flag is, he basically says, uh, he used to be a journalist. And then um, he, he, he ripped and dipped so hard that the BBC said, nah, dude, can't take it. I, it's, it's, it's he too did spicy. not say ripped and dipped so it's hard. I've got to come he, back to my man. He was defense. saying, 
Okay, okay, I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. But um, he was, ba- I, I guess he was kind of saying like, like, you know, maybe, maybe he was trying to go too hard on, he was, he, I think he said he wanted to do more in-depth content. That's okay. what he said in the trailer. He's like, yeah. I want to go more in-depth. Yeah. BBC said, too spicy, back it up. You know what I'm saying? They said, yeah, hey, you're getting spicy. Back it up. <laughs> right. BBC? BuzzFeed BC. Because your, your boy's not doing listicles. He's doing full length, whatever, right? Yeah, he's doing doc, so, like docs and stuff. He does docs. Um, now, that's the interesting thing. So he yeah. has another documentary called Glitch in the Matrix. Documentary. Yeah. Um, documentary. It's, it's honestly probably one of my favorite conspiracy documentaries I've seen in a couple of years. It's his music is good. Cinematography. Beautiful. He's a great filmmaker. Yeah. Great filmmaker. Um, I just, it's not journalism. I, it might be a brainwash video. So here's the thing. You guys are talking about Brian Rose. Okay. You guys are talking about Brian Rose, talking right. about freedom of speech, Push. BBC, in yeah. grouping, out grouping. Mm-hmm. So I started watching this guy's documentary glitch in the matrix. Do you know what glitch in the matrix is about? Can I tell you real quick? Go ahead, please. So, so Jordan Peterson, which I think is his, uh, the, a great guruji to him. I don't know how you feel about Jordan Peterson, but I think that's their spiritual leader here. Um, he got into a debate with a feminist on BBC and yeah. just like, just laid her out, I guess. Like yeah. he won the debate. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he made it, this guy made a documentary and the premise of the documentary is the glitch in the matrix is Jordan Peterson's. It was, it's, I, I guess I could call it like a moral panic kind of documentary where he basically did a documentary saying, what is her, like, what's wrong with, like, basically, if, if you think she won, you're part of the blue pill, blue media, uh, the blue church, they called it. He included BBC and in, he put BBC in there too. Kind of like David Rose, where he's like, if anyone, so if you're part of this Brian thing, Rose, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like Brian Rose. He's like, if you're part of this thing, you're blue pilled, you're a little cuck, a little beta cuck, you're fucking cucking around, lost your dick to a bunch of feminists. But if you're on the red <laughs> church, you take the red pill, now you're a Peterson boy. Now you're, you're Viagra, your, you're rock hard. You're, you're rock hard. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. Peterson boy. You're in the gang, baby. Sure. So, you, so, you, so, so, the, so that's the initial premise of it. Already, it's documentary. It's very heavily opinionated. And he seems like a nice guy, especially when he's on the show with you. Very, very cool guy. Very, like, calm and sober. Yeah. But I think it's a pretty extreme opinion. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me if I'm being a cuck over here. But then, but then he had a bunch of interviews. And this is where, look, this is where I got to give him a little credit. Because here's the thing with the BBC. Here's the thing with the Beebs, okay? The okay. Beebs. They do this thing. They're like, you know. Old I love this, okay? Because I yeah. want to be called out. I love it. Yeah, I love. I love. Finally, game, I baby. have. I have a Baba <laughs> to call me out. <laughs> no, no, I'm not calling you out. I'm more like him. I don't know. He look. He's in a gray but, area. We've well, talked about a lot of people today. No, no, no. And actually, but but I, I, it's very interesting because I think that while on the one hand, of course, you're not a guilty for who you associate with. At the same time, I do think it's important to consider who you associate with, but. I'll say in London, in Rebel Wisdom's defense, as much as I could find out about him at the time, he seems like a really, so nice. maybe he has a point of view, but he is a journalist. He w- worked as a journalist and whether or not he's making opinionated pieces. I mean, what I like about him is that he is at least when you, when I was watching his pieces on Brian Rose, they're very careful, more careful than yeah. I was. I mean, I contacted Brian Rose four times. He contacted him six times. I gave Brian Rose like 48 or 24 hours to respond. My guess is this guy gave him more time to respond. He's yeah, just a very yeah. careful journalist. And I really admired, I still admire that about him. And I do admire his filmmaking. I think it's tight. It's- regardless of his perspective, what I, I think that he brings to the table, especially in that conversation, is I was very heated. I was very like hot, like this guy, he's a scam, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This guy was much more careful. David Fuller is a much more calculated, and he thinks about the broader issues beyond just Brian Rose as an individual. He's talking about what's going on in the culture, in the culture that's creating our need for this. And he was talking about like, Free speech, Brian Rose is playing this super powerful, if I can summarize his argument, Brian Rose is playing a really powerful card with the freedom of speech card that a lot of conservatives feel like need to be played. Like Donald Trump, when he sent that tweet, genius tweet, 
because he played to a lot of conservatives. I like think Jordan believe. Peterson too. I think Jordan Peterson did the playbook for this guy. And, and, and look, Roger Ailes was doing it before them. And I think conservatives have always done this. They fuck with liberals. They get outraged. And then these conservatives, they'll get outraged that they're outraged. So it's, that's a Ponzi scheme. It's an emotional Ponzi scheme where you're like, okay, what are you mad about now? Because this is a Fox News has always been doing this. They put out like, so they, this guy's calling it blue church. It's a, okay, Fox has been calling it liberal media. And it goes back to like, there's this communist agenda or like left-wing agenda trying to take over our media and they're trying to feminize us or whatever. But Fox News has been doing it forever. Trying to this cuck guy us. does it with Blue Church. What's that? They're trying to cuck us. They're trying to cuck us. These guys have, dude, the blue pill, red pill, like as a piece of journalism, he opened the documentary saying, if you're on her team, he did the, he did the polarizing thing. He did the us against them. He did the freedom of speech attack. Um, uh, he did like, yeah, like, like who's here on? And then, then this is again, the thing with the BBC and journalism is that the Beebs, I feel like they put out documentaries. I mean, they'll have one person saying like one opinion. You know what I'm saying? Your boy Fuller, he just, he said the whole documentary, one op- dude, everyone, same opinion. Every single person, he's like, hey, so what did you think of the, how, what did you, it was, the questions were set up weird too, but every single person, like the first guy, uh, Jordan, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what's it called? Uh, Edit, not editorialize. I'm going to paraphrase the shit out of this because I'm a comic or whatever. But the, the first guy, Greenhill, he goes, so what did you think happened there? And Greenhill goes, she came with lies and deceit and it could not stand in front of the pure light of truth that is the most high Jordan Peterson and there was nothing she could do. And she was destroyed and crushed. Dude, it's, I'm telling you. That is not, that's not what happened. I'm paraphrasing. Then he goes to the woman, which is a bit of a hack move too, to be like, hey, you're a woman. What do you think? It's like, dude, uh, she's your friend. You already know what she's going to say. Well, whatever. I guess it's a documentary. So, and that's why I was doing it's it. A yes, a woman. The <laughs> woman said, the woman said, the woman said, actually, um, I think she was a disgrace on all women and all feminism that day. She was such a disgrace. Like, so she went into another thing. Um, he, and then he had on a rebel wisdom camp counselor, I guess, an elder or whatever. Uh, he had a clip of Jordan Peterson being like, hey, if I'm debating with a man and he starts talking shit, I'll drop him. I swear to God, this is, and it's like, no that's why when, when you're talking no to a woman, I'm it's not skeptical. real debate. I'm skeptical of this. I'm I mean, skeptical. it's called Glitch in the Matrix, and the I Matrix want to hear Jordan is the Peterson blue be like, church. Be like, yo, if that guy was a guy, I'm dead. I'm laying him out, dude. I mean, that's the clip. Uh, we'll, we'll have to almost, you know what we should do for next episode or maybe another episode is like, we should be like, how much of a Mish was just like going off on tangents and how much was actually close to this glitch in the matrix? Because already to me, the glitch in the matrix is already, he's setting it up like a, like a so, bit of a conspiracy but, but, thing. But let me, he look. wants to go for this thing, like a, the deeper issue for a culture kind of thing. Right. And you're saying, you're, let me summarize your summary to really get to the heart of this thing. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, yeah. So he, he was saying that, yeah, there's this, there's this dominant culture, but then Jordan Peterson was too powerful, so then he <laughs> cut right through like a knife through the That's culture. The documentary. Is that is that is that what it is? I mean, the documentary, I, I, to, to call it a documentary or journalism, it just felt a little bit like, okay, you had one opinion, you made a graphic to say this intense opinion, um, you interviewed a bunch of your friends, like – there are arguments you can make. Like one of the, like, look, I don't want to just give writing notes. I know it's an arrogant thing to do. One thing you could do is you could talk about when people are debating, and this is an old Greek philosophy, and I think Jordan Peterson's even talked about this. When you're debating, if you won, that just means you won, you knew how to debate better. Like you knew how to use argument like stuff. Yeah, or you're better rhetorically. Rhetor- yeah, it's like rhetorical stuff. Like so, so that he never really talked about. Um, he kind of skipped past that and just said, Hey, why do you think everyone's a beta male cuck now? Like that, it was kind of like, Hey, why do you think some fucking harpy thinks she can talk shit to PD pops? And they all same opinion, same. So no other side, no, cause there are arguments in the sense that like, look, I'm not going to pretend like she won the debate. She did not win the debate. Sure. But we we like, like there's, it feels like a piece of propaganda where you skip pat where, where there's the fear mongering, the more moralizing of like, you're part of the blue church you're part of this cult or whatever if you're not agreeing with her but also there's this thing of like there's no other thing to talk about here like he was bringing up arguments she couldn't defend the arguments because she's like i mean peterson's a good speaker man i mean he's a great rhetorically he's incredible but they didn't talk about any of that it's just an hour long of one opinion and then here's the thing now he's not doing the hard clothes like these guys but he's got the course and he's got the, the training camp, which is, I guess it's fine. I, mean, I can't, de- no, I, I listen, the, the thing is, is that I think I, I've spoken to him and I think, um, he's very nice. I, it is hard to, 
Discipline. Yeah, yeah. He's like using it as like a way to support his channel or whatever, like the course. Yeah. The thing is, is the course is like two hundred and fifty dollars. I'm not sure. ever, I'm not ever going to promote camp? it. But what's the camp? That's my question. Uh, yeah, Cause... I, I don't know. But here's the thing, Amish. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you pick your battles. Everyone's got a freaking course these days, man. I mean, I'm so it's I'm tough, sure baby. Myself. It's tough. Yeah, you're gonna start a course. I'm <laughs> I, I'm struggling out here to find anybody who doesn't have a course. Um, yeah, and yeah. Look, at the end of the and day, Peterson was the first, but I do feel like a lot of the tactics that Brian Rose used, he, it, the the playbook is from here. But the, but but the, the dif- but the difference. Hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. And the difference is this. My point along this whole thing, and I think. David's point is that he's using freedom of speech disingenuously to siphon money from his followers. Whereas yeah. where, whether or not you agree with the freedom of speech card from Jordan Peterson, it is meant genuinely and it is taken from a place, not like totally cynically to like siphon money from followers. Our, our point was I agree with look, you on that. this platform that he's like saying he wants to make it exists. And like the thing that he's talking about, he keeps lying to his followers. He keeps yeah. inventing new phases. And it's always like, it's all about him. It's not about how do we create something for people like me? It's like all centered around him. So it's different. But it's different. It's different. Yeah. He does have, no. he, he does have a course. I, and I talked to him about his triangle. That's one thing I'll tell you. I told him, got to get rid of the triangle. It's too. So in, in the interview with Jordan Peterson, and this is again, like journalism is so tough. He, at the end of one of the interviews with him, again, it's just, I don't want to be rude, but to call it journalism, like he's just setting him up with like, it's, it's a grown man kind of jerking another man off, but whatever. At the end, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes I know, it's rude, I know. But dude, at the end, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, professor, we got the t-shirts and he takes out and then the professor actually does an explanation. He's like, yes, yes, it's a pyramid to represent the hierarchy that must be followed. But the son is in the middle and that represents the father. I think they're brainwashed. Look, they're I nice love you, David. I have they're nothing nice wrong with you. I have nothing wrong with you. Yeah, I, I like pyramid. your logo. I do think you need to change it, it though. Is- because it's too, it's too much. Well, yeah, because it's too much like the Illuminati. I saw it. I was like, is this guy in the Illuminati or something? Is- but that's what I'm saying. They believe that, I think. Like, no, they believe no, that no, communism no, no, is coming no, no, to get us. No, 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 no. I don't and think And you got to believe in the, this uh, hierarchy. No. Let me actually say, though, let me actually Tell say, me. in he, like, so some, I was looking at when that documentary was made. It was made in 2018. Okay. And I'm a big believer. Tell me what you think about this, okay? Have you ever heard of the idea of thesis, antithesis, synthesis? Uh, tell me again, because I've heard this. Ah, you might have okay. heard it in the Sam Ovens where he this was talking about This is more of the Baba side something. of laugh, laughing Babas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is great. great the Baba yeah. side. So, thesis, so it's this idea that ideas come along and they're in tension with each other and they create something new and then they become in tension again. And I sort of think about this. I mean, this actually, I don't even want to say that this is the philosophical idea because I've kind of hijacked this idea and created my own thing. So this is just my own thing. Okay. Basically, I believe that culture swings on pendulums. And that it's constantly sort of swinging between like, okay, people kind of believe that liberals have it right. Oh, people kind of think that conservatives have been wronged and they have it right. And there's like this like swinging and there are always people on both sides, but like there's sort of this like tied between the dominant, like what the kind of culture is thinking. And I think at that time, it was a very specific time with Jordan. It was weird when Jordan Peterson like took over the internet, he took over. Dude, like, there's channels dedicated everything. to him. Yeah. Defending him, like no. A, a, if you think about Rebel Wisdom. A lot of their early videos are like, you shouldn't have been talking shit. Like, there's another channel that's just like, hey, talking shit about Peterson, don't talk shit. Well, you and, know? and and the videos are like Jordan Peterson destroys, like feminists, whatever. And yeah. then what's here's what's interesting though. Now there's a bunch of videos countering that. And so it's like Jordan Peterson was like countering this like dominant ideology. Then Jordan Peterson for a time sort of became very dominant in our culture. And then, like, there were a bunch of people taking him down. And That's trust me, trust me, there are going to be a bunch of people taking them down. Movements like this, they never last forever. Like, they just, no. they come, they serve their time to correct whatever the imbalance was, or maybe not, but... And then something else comes along and it's like, that's the new thing. And then something else. I think, look, look you got to respect him for the come up, but yeah. I don't know if, like... I mean, I, I get it. Like he was trying to get back at some, I guess some feminists were canceling people too much and that did get weird yeah. for sure. And yeah. then he made it like, I must do that. I have to go back and fight against them, whatever. Um, my, I guess my only issue is that, is that I think 
there is this anti-communist thing that he brings up a lot, which I know it, it's just been so damaging in America, especially where it's like there's these communists come in and it's this communist feminist agenda. It's destroying our culture. It's going to turn the boys into cocks and then we're all going to become communist. So my only issue with this narrative, and it's an old narrative, this is why the Americans are in every country. We hear about Vietnam. Okay, and I've heard Peterson even talk about like, oh, there's these guys. They've been they've been protesting uh, the government in the '70s too because they're whining hippies. Have you seen these protests, dude? They're be it, it offends me when I see a white person, a white kid, get beat up. It's like, look, that's a lot. Okay, I'm used to this happening in other countries. We're at '70s. I'm looking Chicago, dude. They're dragging kids out of the university because they're like, you fucking go fight in Vietnam because communism's coming. And we're talking about, that's the one that damaged Americans, so we hear about Vietnam more, very traumatizing. In Indonesia, dude, they straight up killed 400,000 people because, and th what really hurts me about that one, they weren't even communist. They were just a little liberal. It was in the name of communism. They fucking killed, dude, this, this American- We had a Salem witch moment with communism. Yeah. It's true. Look, the no, problem it's not over. is- it, it, it comes back. Like, I, think I you brought know, it back. I know, time. but listen. I'm Cuban, half Cuban. You know that I okay. told you last time. I'm never oh, going to so stop you, repeating it. So yeah. I have a different perspective on this. My grandparents yes. came fresh off the boat. They were, they were like 20, 21, 25. I forget their exact age. But they basically came over. My grandpa, one of the last planes out. And then they shut the country down. Boom, done. Fidel forever. Yeah. Okay. So he hates communism. Hate it. Hard. Because they've seen what it did. They had a beautiful life. They were, they got married. They're about to start their family. They went over with a baby. They, so they like had their whole life. Imagine you have your whole life together. Imagine mm -hmm. someone takes over Canada. Canada's done. Everything you know about Canada, gone, done, boom. Fair so, enough. I understand the trauma. Russians to Eastern Europe to, uh, we, we went to this. Uh, communism thing. has a bad record, dude. It, bad record. It does have a, it, it has, it does have a bad record. And, but, but I think the Americans, what they did is after World War II, they assumed that communism was going to be as bad as Nazism. And so they made this military industrial complex to permanently forever keep fighting it. And also they used that same rhetoric to just ruin the healthcare system. Cause the health, this is the other thing, even in America, then it hurts you because you're like, well, you can't, if you get healthcare, you're a socialist, now you're a commie. So this, and I'm talking about like Vox has a great piece yeah, about this. Where they show the ads. Hey, we're not about you know, how, how do you, Dude. You don't like it. Eh? That's for the softy ass shit. Dude, that's that's, that's, that's for cuck. babies, dude. In America? Cuck. In America, you're a cuck if you need healthcare, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm obviously joking, but um, right, right. there's a little bit of It's that. hard to tell. Some people, sometimes uh, people think that. There is legitimately a little bit of that vein in American, like uh, especially in conservatism, where yeah. it's sort of like, hey, if you don't have the money to pay for it, what are you doing in the hospital? Hey. Remember, remember, remember when what's his name? Uh, Ron Paul. He's at the Republican convention, and he and and they're pressing him. He's like a full libertarian. They're pressing. He's like, "What if someone's dying and they come to the hospital and he he, what is going to happen? No health care." And Ron Paul goes, "Well, then I guess he'll die." And the crowd goes, "Yeah, <laughs> I love Republic. it, dude. Woo! Dude, freedom, baby, <laughs> freedom, baby, freedom to live, freedom yeah. to die. That's it." Um. Yeah, yeah, but but the, the, but that communist scare, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it, it is hard to defend it. And, and look, look, I'm nobody's sure. communist. That's the other thing. Like, I'm not. I'm not. Obviously, it's never yeah. going to work. I mean, yeah. this is the thing too. Is that even in America, there was people trying to fight it. Be like, hey, how about we don't go bankrupt on this? It literally a conspiracy that Moscow is backing Brazil and Indonesia, and today they take Vietnam and Cambodia. They're going to come to America. But it is tough to argue with the Castro thing because Castro's right there, Russia, same thing, Eastern Europe. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying, hey, what's the big – I mean, also, yeah. Like, I, right, think, I, think what, I think what you're saying, though, I mean, part of what you're saying is we do have a little bit of a, like a slippery slope in us where we see anything that's close and we say that's communism when it's not. So it's, that's it, your point yeah, is that heavy we're – Heavy propaganda on that side, I find. Heavy propaganda that anti-communist. And then on the right-wing team, and again, these guys are worried about this. There's a moral panic of like, today we'll do this, and then tomorrow communist. Uh, I think Peterson would talk about gulags a lot. Like, we'll end up in these, like, bread lines, whatever. But when I think about what could destroy America, I mean, the military's everywhere. The healthcare's fucked. These are all, this is all right-wing shit. I'm not saying the Democrats don't do it. This is where I'm getting political now. I I'm not saying like the Democrats don't all... do it. I'm saying 
Republicans do it by design. I mean, right, conservatives do it by design. And then the, de the left, they do it because they're weak and spineless and they just can't say no to the money. They got to take the money at this point. You know what I'm saying? I feel like everybody that dude. Yeah. I mean, they did go, they did do. I feel like there are a lot, so like fighting. both sides are, and this is such a cliche thing. So I'm going to say something to back, yeah. it, back it up. You're saying a both side equivalency. No, 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 not both sides equivalency, but they, a lot of the actions are the same. And the people who will do something different, who actually are ideologues and will believe in something and like stand for something, they'll never get in. You saw that with Sanders, dude. Sanders, I believe would have done something different. Yeah. And he would, and agree with him or not he stood for what he stood for but yep. guess what dude out there's too much power there's too much power consolidated and those yeah. people are going to keep it and at a certain level i don't i don't think it comes down to i'm a republican i'm a democrat it's i have money and i'm going to keep that money baby can, yeah hey, yo can i just say one more one more uh sure. fucking peterson thing that pissed me off trump's getting you, elected this peterson you know what he says he's like Donald Trump, hey, he's funny. I don't know. I Maybe I'll vote for him. Maybe I'll tell my boys. I don't know. Paraphrasing like fucking crazy, I know. But he's like, I don't know. Maybe I'll vote for him. Uh, Trudeau in Canada, we got Justin Trudeau. He appointed like a 50% female thing. And he, dude, someone asked him on TV. And he's like, this will ruin everything. You'll destroy the whole country if you put 50%, because he pushed 50% women, the meritocracy, the whatever. Hey, Trudeau's doing all right, man. I mean, he call him a cuck. Hey, you want to call him a cuck? Hey, I'm going to call him blackface. Did you see <laughs> call his blackface him a gay. He's, a, he's a blackface. How call did he get away with that? I was stunned. I guess he I is thought dumb. the I thought the he's liberals so nice. would eat him on that because that's what they do. Some did. They, Some they did. kind of like a little bit. You, my mom loved it. She was like, hey, look at this guy. He loves us. That's what <laughs> there's so many. My mom was like, look, he's dressing up like us. He loves us. I don't give a shit. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a weird thing too, though. Where I'm like, I understand blackfacing is so wrong. I, Wait, you know, but, but but how far back before it's like the, Is there a statute of limitations on dumb decisions? <laughs> and I'm gonna say that knowing that's probably gonna get a lot of hate. But listen, Dude, Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. twenty years twenty years ago, blackface. blackface. They just pulled it up. They just pulled it up. Oh, did he get canceled? <laughs> well, no, dude, he's too big. But you know, he's like, hey, Trudeau, he's still prime minister. <laughs> he's like, I can't have a show. Trudeau's yeah. prime minister. So Trudeau really paved the way for all the black facers. Uh, but <laughs> my, point, my point is, though, my point is, though, both cases, yeah. they're bringing up stuff from like 16, 15, 30 years ago. I know that for it's me, I would feel like if you brought up what I did five years ago, I'd feel like, dude, I've changed. A lot, and that's that's not me trying to apologize for anything, but it's actually legitimately yeah. true. But especially as you get older and older, if someone brings up something from when you're like 20, come on, yeah. things change, and like, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess there was this, there is this back and forth thing. Um, every time I look at numbers, it just seems like the right wing is kicking ass and the left, what did they do? They got someone canceled. I mean, there's such fucking losers on the left. They, like, do something that makes a difference, right? Like, like they uh, fuck up in ways. Like all of this, they're like you, Roger Ailes does this a lot too, where he basically sets these like like offending them traps. So there's a great foot shot where he has. What's the, up with the Roger Ailes thing? I've never heard someone talk Roger so much Ailes. about Roger Ailes. I mean, he's a terrible person. You know who Roger Ailes? Roger Ailes, dude, he is the king of media. He is like such a hair. Like, like I look, feel like I, I know. I know you do the traditional scams. But yeah. we're talking like there's there's oh, levels Fox. of the scams. Like we're talking Fox, he was on a high level, and Fox, dude, right now Fox is selling gold. Like, he's we're, dead, dude. He's dead. He's Roger. dead. But wait, Fox news. It lives on. I mean, it Fox. lives on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, lives yeah. on, and and dude, nobody wants to advertise with them because they're always talking this fucking shit. So so they're doing like a fat shaming bit. Dove is like, hey, we're not gonna put our real beauty inside beauty on your your shit. So now you watch Fox. It's just they're talking about like, what do you want? Canadian healthcare? It's garbage. Cut to commercial. American freedom healthcare. Buy it now. It's the same. Like like even all of them were in gold companies. Because even Glenn Beck, Bill O'Reilly, they're right. like, we have the highest numbers. Sure. Nobody wants to give us money. Uh, but I got I'm selling gold. <laughs> Dude, honestly though, if if you're a company, maybe it's worth advertising on Fox. Cheap real estate. Is yeah. it the backlash from everybody else? Do you get canceled because you're advertising These, on Fox? They're pretty vicious. And like, look, man, we're talking about vicious. Like, again, I don't want to get, I know it's a bummer to get so political, but like these guys sold the Iraq war. The Iraq war right, is going to destroy. 
listen, we're talking about listen. economically trillions. Hey. Tell me. Hey. This is Texas. I know it's Texas. It's, it's, it's you're, you're, you're like, hey, 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 don't don't talk about the military, baby. We got we got we gotta get that money in Texas. God, guns and country, brother. God, guns and country. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna lose our viewership, okay? Hey, hey, no gun talk. <laughs> Imagine of all the stuff we say, I'm like, Dude. ban guns. Well, I, feel, I feel like we're so much on both sides that we're going to get canceled by both sides. Dude, that's what happened to Julian Assange, man. Julian Assange. <laughs> real, a real shouldn't have been talking shit moment for Julian Assange. So Julian Assange puts out these Iraq logs. It's yeah. all this illegal shit that, that, the, that the Americans did in Iraq during their occupation, which was fucking me. What a waste of money. But it even they did a bunch of illegal shit. He puts it out with New York Times with all these big journalists. Pompeo is like, I'm going to fucking kill you, you little shit. Pompeo is like the head of like the military, I guess the military or whatever. But he's basically like, you're going to die in jail, Julian Assange. Go fuck yourself. Now, at the time before, the left-wing people were helping him out. Then during the Hillary campaign, he fucked Hillary. So now the lefty said, fuck him. He's uh, going to die now. He's going to die. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. yeah, he's oh, done. Yeah. He's done. He's done. 23 hours a day, he's in iso- he's like in, like isolation. That no is what he anyway. did wrong, isn't it? Because when I look at what he did, I think to myself, oh, he exposed. But his problem was he exposed both sides. You this need, and, I'm and that's leftist. why you need to be polarized is because you need allies. You need to you not need just allies. make enemies. You need allies. You can't just fuck with everyone, man. Yeah, that, that's that oh. Julian So you're saying, hey, get in line with Peterson. Don't talk shit. Get in Let's line get with some- Rebel Wisdom, baby. Even though he's Let's get in line with Rebel Wisdom. <laughs> get some of those viewers over. Yeah. And then you'll can, and then we'll start talking. I mean, it's not too bad. Look, I'm not calling him a Brian Rose, obviously. Yeah, it's well, just, he, yeah, he's definitely the documentary. He's, he's not. He's not. Uh, he's got a point of view. But look, I don't know. I like people with points of view. You have a point of view. Yeah. I love it. I don't share yeah. your point of view. I don't share his point of view. We're ju- we're, none of it's fine. It's fine, dude. Everyone's different. Everyone's got their own thing. Um, hey, I, look, listen. Rebel, I'll co- Wait, look. You want to come? You want to come on, Laughing Baba? We'll do it. I don't dude. Feel, I don't feel hey, fucking- he can answer some <laughs> hard hitting questions, baby. <laughs> we come at him with love and kindness, brother. We're gonna fan that circle. Ah, uh, he drew a circle to keep me out. Yeah, I drew a bigger circle and I pulled him in, y'all. And dude, the crowd is like, tell him, Joel. Hey, I him. feel like you need to come to Texas. Really? I do. I have family over there. Buy you a house? Get you a house free? <laughs> okay. Well, we have gone. Hey, great episode. It's so long. Deep, dude. We've so gone deep. Um, anyone who's still here, let's talk wow. to those guys. First of all, appreciate you. Thank you. Second Thank of all, you. not you. I was appreciating them. The people. No, I'm appreciating oh, them too. Okay. The okay. People. Hey. Yeah. The people. The two people who love are still us. here. Love you guys. Tell us in the comments below if you have a guru you'd like us to talk about. Yes. Hit us up with some topics, please. We're dying for topics over here. We're going to try to make this. I'm feeling it may be that we feel like we have to do this every week, but I'd be fine also doing it maybe biweekly. It depends how many influencers you have lined out the door. <laughs> that you're collaborating with. And by the way, I love that you go, hey, tell me if they, do you have 100,000 followers? Yes or no? <laughs> Because look, I don't even have 100,000 followers. You're already trying to go beyond me. Like, <laughs> even I, I, wrote that, I am I instantly a stepping like <laughs> stool. Like I feel like. <laughs> That's so funny. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm just here to witness the birth of a star, baby. Hey, we're doing it together. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave you guys. Hey, hey, you say that. Hey, when they hit that, when you hit that 500,000 mark though, when you hit you're that. You're going to come, you, but you're, you're growing with me. I'm growing with you, baby. Right? Like, I mean, if, hey, if I do that, that's people right. come in. That's right. What are we we come do? to CoffeeZilla, baby. I'm going to be like, that's check right. out CoffeeZilla. Hey, I love that's it. the game now. I love it, baby. Collab, collab the world away. Hey, appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate the audience. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll Thank see you, you next time. Epic. You can use your charms, but you got a tough sell. Well, you can use your horns Well, they'll hook me, I know Well, they'll poke and pail I'll flail you, tell me where to go Well, you can burn out all the stars in the sea But you won't ever get your papers on me Well, you can chain me to your family tree But you won't ever get your papers on me